Right. Um, okay. So should be should be live. Um, hey, I'd say. Hey, man. Okay. So how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, basically, sorry, we're a little bit late, uh, y'all. Uh, basically, we're having some technical difficulties, as there always is, in one way or another. Uh, but we, we managed to figure it out, so it's all good. Um, yeah, uh, I'm joined today by Ete. Um, and Ete, so, um, it's all let's good. see. Um, one second, I managed to click the wrong button here. Sorry, I'm just getting the last bit set up. There we go. Okay. Etsy, Etsy. How do you how do you pronounce your uh, your last name correctly? Because I don't want to slaughter it. Uh, Gailan. Gailan. So Etsy Gailan yeah. and Etsy and I we met we met the first time back in 2012, I believe. Um, yeah. In Newcastle uh, at Etsy Hawk Studio, and um, and Etsy was like grinding away. He was like. <laughs> You know, you're, you're you're like eating tomato soup for like oh my god, oh <laughs> for, for like two weeks straight because you had no time to like do any like to cook, so you just wanted to get back to to working. So uh, I remember even back then you were having like a insane, uh, very disciplined sort of mindset of like you just wanted to utilize every single second in the day, um, and now uh, or and then we kind of like. You know, I, I was done with the internship and then moved back to school. And then you uh, joined um, Riot, right? And then we actually got the chance to work at Riot too, um, yep. which was really wonderful. You were in the special team for a bit, but you've been on Valorant. Um, and now, after how many years at Riot were you at? Six and a half. Six and a half. After six and a half, you decided to go back to Sweden start your own studio and to yep. uh and to do that and now you're uh the founder of inva and uh yep. you're kicking ass with that so uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's been really really fun to kind of like see how that whole journey kind of happened um do you, you want to like tell people a little bit about yourself like what do you do um little short yeah. introduction yeah, super happy to do this live stream and chat with you, man. Uh, day before Christmas as well, we needed a Christmas miracle to get the audio to work, which we got <laughs> in the end. Yes. Um, yeah, so my role now is, uh, I, I met Desmond, like you said, almost, it's, I can't believe it's almost 10 years ago. Yeah. It's it's crazy how, how time just flies. And uh, now I, I run my own studio here. I left Riot about a year ago. Uh, I started a studio uh it was in november it was just me you know um i think with covid you know I, I wanted to try something different go back to family and today we're 30 people in our studio with a lot of people working remotely um it's just a bunch of incredible people that i get a chance to work with every day and i'm super happy about that and that's awesome like you've been uh you've been having so much like you've been going with 100 miles an hour and it's just keep going i cannot believe the <laughs> amount of growth uh that the company had like from from zero to 30 and 30 is along as a, is a, as many people to both manage and make sure and all that so that's a lot of work for sure um but uh but yeah tonight we're just gonna hang out and chill we're gonna do we're we're gonna kind of take it really relaxing and everything so it's going to be a very chill stream we're not going to kind of like put a ton of pressure on uh, on our shoulders in order to say like yeah we need to perform or whatever we're going to sit and draw we're going to have fun Edsa has a piece that he would really like to um, move along with and finish up uh, and i have no idea what i'm going to be doing uh, maybe some faces of some sort um, but it's just going to be super chill and then we're going to be taking uh, what's it called some q a uh, from the from the chat so if there's any sort of questions feel free to just shoot them uh, shoot them off but yeah let's say what is what is this piece that you're working on so this was a piece i actually started when it was autumn but <laughs> now we got a chance <laughs> to finish it uh I just like the idea you know whenever you find like a good spot you sit outside and you just sit and sketch um, and the, the, the image is called artist sketching and I sort of just want to capture that. 
uh, kind of like in the shade, but uh, like autumn is my favorite uh, season, you know, like the colors are just so beautiful. Uh, and, uh, like, you know, when we live, you lived in LA as well, like there's really no autumn there. Um, but in Sweden, we have it. And last year or this year, I got to see it and I wanted to paint something inspired by it, but I, I never got to finish it. So we'll see how far we can make it today. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is autumn your favorite uh, time of the season or like which season is uh, is your favorite? I think so, because like I love to go outside and paint. And that is the one season where you get like these beautiful colors and no ins like the weather is it's not too cold it's not too warm there's no insect it's like the perfect balance for for outdoor painting so and you get great colors so it's it's uh yeah that's <laughs> definitely my favorite season awesome and would you want to tell people about what happened with uh, your plein air plein air session today oh man uh so if we <laughs> finally we <laughs> we it was probably the worst plein air session ever, but we finally, um, it, you know, haven't had much vacation this year, but now we finally are going break this year. Uh, and I thought, I mean, one of the things I would do during this break is do some plein air painting. Um, and I got my, my gear, everything set up for the first outdoor painting session uh, during the break. And, you know, because it's now, in, uh, I live in Stockholm uh, and it was, it's minus four. Um, you, if you ever tried painting outside when it's minus, um, you have to find ways to keeping your fingers from going like into icicles, right? Um, and one of the ways I like to do it is have hot tea with me. So it's like, you know, you wrap your hand around the mug, you drink some hot tea and, and uh, you know, it's sort of like you balance it out and keeping your fingers warm that way. You take quick breaks. So I prepared a massive jug of hot tea, you know, and I, ended, I did a short hike to get to the location. Uh, by the time I'd arrived, I realized I did not screw the, the, the lid on properly and literally everything was soaked in warm tea, you know. So the, <laughs> the first uh, outdoor painting session did not work out, let's just say that. So did you end up, did you go home afterwards, like after you found out that the tea was just like spilled all over or were you like, okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to try and sit and do this anyway or what happened? I still tried. I still tried, but the problem was like my because I haven't done it in a while. My setup wasn't um, because every time you do it, you discover something new of like, oh, I need to make sure this works and this. And my tripod wasn't set up perfectly, so the wind kept blowing over my canvas all the time. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's, so, that's horrible. Yeah, it was a definite. It's like you were struggling to just. To just get paint on the canvas was just trying to just have a, <laughs> a good time, uh, you know, doing the paint, plein air while uh, everything is wet. Uh, so uh, I, I call it quit pretty pretty early. But uh, I'll be back uh, in a few days again to try again. That's good. That's good. A for yeah. effort. But yeah, that, <laughs> like <laughs> if you don't have the heat, you know, like you're yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna freeze out there very fast. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have snow in uh, in Sweden right now? Uh, it's like frost and um, the lakes, uh, like because I was painting next to a lake, and like a, you know, it's not near the the coast. It's indoor. I don't know what you call that, um, but it's it's completely frozen over. So people do a lot of ice skating. So it's it's really really nice now. Is it? Is, do you have snow in Denmark? Yeah, I think yeah, you do. We do. We do. Yeah, yeah. It 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 hit on the first of December. All of a sudden, we just got a, a lot of snow, and then. Uh, what happened after was like it kind of disappeared but now it's back it's back right in time for christmas yeah. tomorrow for us so um yeah it's it's wonderful because i haven't i haven't hadn't had snow in like you know all the time i was in la which was about five almost five years and i was like coming back to it and i was like oh my god I miss yeah. it. <laughs> you know it just has a a special vibe too because that's also what i felt in la you know during christmas time it, it, it's hard because you know you, you grew up in in, in 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 denmark right so you always used to snow during winter uh so yeah yeah uh, it definitely it doesn't feel quite like christmas if it isn't like cold and dark and gloomy yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's part of it it's part of it yeah that's awesome so how's can you like uh do you want to share a bit with like how has it been like starting your own studio and all that like because it's not only that like um you relocated country you yep. 
became a father and you yeah. <laughs> and, and you started a studio. So it's like you did like all of the the big things like all in one go. Can you share? Yeah. Can you share a little bit like how that was? Uh, do not recommend to do all three at once. Uh, but <laughs> but um, I think this year was probably um, the most intense uh, for me uh, to try and like. Uh, juggle everything right you know because when you do your own studio it's like um, you can't really fail right uh, because it's not like um, we're getting external investment it's like you have it, it, it's it was very like high pressure to make sure it worked um, and uh, pretty stressful year but I think uh, as a whole uh, good to have a, a bit of a break uh, now by the end of the year and when do you guys kind of go back and, and start up again? Uh, we'll be back 3rd of January. Uh, are you, do you, do you have a break as well? You also have a break now, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm also on the break now. Okay. Are you also back 3rd of January? Back 3rd of January, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's good. I'm really enjoying the, the vacation too. I, 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 I needed it. Um, yeah. So I think also like one thing that's maybe good to just uh, let you guys know, like um, we we work full time jobs and then like the social media and all. And this is like kind of like more like a play playtime playground uh, activities. Um, <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, so, you know, like uh, like what we normally do in, in the day to day. Uh, is, is more job like I would say because we don't just sit and 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 do this all all day, get paid for it. Yeah. But that would that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Twitch streaming of of art instead of streaming games, you just stream uh, personal paintings. Oh man, what? Okay, wait. That's that could that could be a fun sort of thing. And like, uh, so let's say you had that. Let's say you were you were in. You were in that sort of world, I'd say. Like, if you, yeah. if you then didn't have to worry about all that, what sort of, uh, what sort of project would you work on? Like, what would be the, the thing oh. that, you, that would you would steer towards? I think, man, I would do slice of life paintings. Uh, like maybe like, um, almost like an artificial person you're following, uh, in their day to day. You know. Uh, maybe it's like slightly uh, alternate reality. I remember there was this particular Instagram. I forgot what it was called. Oh, it was called Living in the Future. I think I showed it to you when, when we were in LA. Yeah. Uh, of this girl who the Instagram worked that it was this um, fictional person's Instagram. And she had like been teleported into the future. And every day she'd post updates of uh, things she saw in the future. And it was like, uh, throwback to stuff that's now and it was it was amazing um and, and maybe something like that i don't know what, what would you do good question i think i'd start with like a, there's a personal project that i would like to to do and, and wrap up and finish that um then afterwards it's a good question i think uh whatever would kind of come to mind at that point but yeah i i think the first thing would be to like kind of uh finish off that personal uh, project yeah but uh but yeah and then just play around with it right like have fun see what kind of comes to mind what what interests you and being able to to explore i think that's yeah that's part of it do you think um uh, because i thought a lot about that do you think you'll ever be because like with gaming right it's like y you know the it's a different entertainment aspect. Do you think ever would be like you'll have art streamers who, uh, because it's so much lower pace, right, <laughs> than someone <laughs> streaming a game? Yeah. Uh, do you think it'll ever be like that? That you have like these uh, really big art streamers? I think we already do. I mean, I think Ross is Ross is one of them, right? Where he went like all in on on the on the YouTube and and also like. Uh, on Twitch too. Uh, I, I know. Oh, he, okay. He, yeah, he, like, uh, my my girlfriend, she was like, she, when she was like in the start, she was like asking if somebody was you know streaming. She would say, "Are you twitching?" And okay. like, <laughs> it's like, it's like so essentially, Ross is Ross is twitching often. Um, okay. And, uh, and 
he's he's I think he's 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 really consistent in in the way that he's doing it. So I think it's already there, but I I, awesome. I don't yeah I don't know I don't know how like I don't know like let's see like I don't think it's as big as some other like streaming and and things like that. But yeah, it could be could be that it but it's so slow pace. It's like um you know, yeah. It's, it's it's not as as exciting I guess to to watch, uh, but yeah, it depends on the viewer I guess. It's very chill. Yeah, I think as an artist maybe it's fun to have one on the side as you uh, seeing someone else paint while you're painting. So definitely, definitely, yeah. There's something. Uh, do you find that too that like I work better when there's like um like if there's a other people that are focused and working around me too where i'm like oh so it's like and then you kind of just like hone in or do you like it more when it's just to you and there's not not no distractions uh nothing uh, i i like men sitting next to especially like you know being uh so much disconnected from everything uh i kind of do miss just uh, just you know like if you get up to stretch your legs or go for a coffee whatever and you can just see everybody screams it's just so goddamn cool you know yeah um i remember that when we were sitting together the splash pot is like it was just amazing you just spin your chair and you're like amazing art amazing art amazing <laughs> art you know uh which is just really really nice i agree that's uh it was some fun time also like when we were uh we would we would sit and do the the games right we would play together um yeah that yeah. was so much fun yeah. yeah. That's actually. Uh, I'm actually curious. What do you think about like? Um, because now I think I think everybody before you know uh, everybody start working uh, uh, remotely. Um, everybody really wanted that, but now that everybody work remotely, do you think people would prefer, I guess it depends on lifestyle, but what do you prefer, like sitting next to people or would you prefer just uh, uh, the work from home situation with hangouts and everything? I prefer, I prefer work from home, but uh, yeah. I think so at least. I think, yeah, that's like what I'm enjoying more, but uh, I do not miss uh, meetings like uh, like the constant yeah. like uh meetings and also like you know sometimes it just feels like it's um it's just all the time and it's like when when there's a the meet creep where meeting is just kind of creeping in and either you're like yeah. man i don't i don't know when i'm supposed to do all this this drawing um yeah. so i i like definitely kind of like the work from home and then having like uh less meetings um so that's that's kind of like that's kind of my been my experience but what about you uh i feel the same man like i i you know i'm also like the meeting stuff but it's like now uh most of my day is meeting <laughs> so it's <laughs> like um uh, i i kind of do want to go back in house though for, for 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 our team at least you know uh and uh, offer the option you know because i do think uh Otherwise, like it could feel, I think, too much a bit of as a grind, you know, when you're just sitting in your room. Uh, but uh, that, that's just my my take on it. No, I, I definitely think there it's like a balance. Like I think almost like the two two days working in, in an office and then the rest, um, yeah, you know, from home. Yeah, I yeah. Think that would that would that would be kind of like maybe my uh, my sort of thing. But I, I don't know, like. Right now, I am really enjoying the the work from home um, solution, um, and I yeah. also find I can just I can kind of schedule my day as I as I see fit. Um, also, because yeah. like essentially, you know, I'm 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 working on my own own hours. So like, if I if I if I feel like I need some I don't know like some time to uh, to take care of something in the background, otherwise I can't really properly focus i can just go ahead and do it and then uh, i can yeah. work a bit in the evening um and that's wonderful i'm really enjoying that a lot yeah 
Yeah, I think definitely it's it's here to stay, and I th I think I think most companies are gonna have to uh, always offer that option. Now, I don't think there's ever gonna be like that situation where uh, you have to. It's expected to be in house. It'd be more like a, a mix, unless you have to obviously move to another country. But yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. But I I think it's also like. There's something magical, ha magically happening, uh, uh, magical happening, when um, when you have you know people kind of gathered and and uh, they learn yeah. from each other like organically and stuff like that. There is something really beautiful to that studio environment. Yeah. But uh, what would you say like a normal normal day looks like for you? Ooh, for me, uh, so. I, I, I don't do too much painting nowadays, uh, day to day in the studio. Um, but I, what I do is help a lot with feedback. And also we hired an, a fantastic art director, Claudio, uh, who I, you know, uh, super talented artist who's helping me more on the feedback side. Uh, so it allowed me to focus a bit on, uh, the studio side and how do we keep moving forward. But what we do is like, we, I get up. Uh, I prepare starting from seven. I prepare, gather all the files for everything from all our artists. And at eight, I meet with my art director. Uh, and we sort of feedback every single piece, every project. We talk about like um, from eight to nine. Uh, is this piece at risk? What does this person need help with? Uh, is this good to go? You know, it's sort of like try to like schedule out the day for how he can focus on and who needs the most help, right? Uh, and if I need, if there's, if I need to dive into help on some of the project as well. Uh, and then we have like our kickoff with all of our teams start kicking off from nine. It's like at nine is like our producers and leads. Uh, and then after that, after 9.30, all the other teams kicks in. And then throughout the day, there's a bunch of like, bunch of stuff that pops up all the time, <laughs> you know, and all the way until I think my day ends at around 10.30. Cause I like to, we have people from Brazil and I always like to be there when, until they end their day, you know, uh, and because of the time zone, it's 10.30 Stockholm time. So. Uh, it's a bit of a longer name, but I think it's important to be around when they when they sign off in case they need anything. Sense, but then you also like yeah, like then you can still like you have to be like around the computer, but you you can also kind of like go around like oh uh, I need to put the dishes or something like that and do that. If, so yeah, yeah, mostly it's working though. It's okay. rare. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do that stuff, so. but yeah. Okay. No yeah. worries. How, how how does your day look like now? Uh, it's very different. It uh it um uh, it's it's um how do you say like it's it kind of depends, and I I really like that because it's like I can I can uh, what's it called I can shift it, but um okay. But the the routine I got going right now is essentially um I'll wake up uh around eight or nine. Yeah. And uh, I'll uh, join in for a warming warm what's it called a warm warm up discord call so i join up in uh, bjorn hurry's uh, discord and we'll all sit and have one hour to do a random topic that's generated on a day and then we'll man, do those step. are beautiful i've thanks, been man. seeing them thanks man. super cool and uh we've been uh, then like then we have an hour to kind of do one of those and it's really nice to kind of like get the get the get get the creative juices flowing and just get warmed up and kind of start into it yeah um and then I start working after that. Um, so I start working from 11 and then around one, um, I'll get a bit to eat. And then um, I have three, t three days a week, I'll work out. So I'll go and I'll go to the gym, do a quick work se workout session. And then I would normally work on until like evening and then around, you know, nine ish or something like that. I'll I'll, uh, what's it called? Eight or nine ish, depending on sometimes I, sh I, you know, again, it's flexible. So sometimes I, 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 f uh, I go start earlier or sometimes I start later. Um, and yeah. then I kind of do it like that, but it's wonderful. And then there's like one, one or two meetings during the week. It's wonderful. Um, that's awesome. And then it's just to do the rest is just to, yeah, focus on making the, 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 the art, you know, and trying to, to do the best you can essentially 
That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So, so that's that's like a day so far. Um, right now. Yeah. yeah. The the speed the the daily paintings. Do you guys all just pop into a Discord call and then uh, uh, Bjorn throws out the topic, or how do you how do you guys approach that? Um, so it's approached like there's a, a bot and everybody can um, they can oh. you know, yeah they can just say like hey uh, add a topic and then they add a topic and uh, then you know like we meet up uh, you know at ten in the morning and we're like okay let's go. We get the bot to say like, "Hey, we we want a topic," and uh, it gives us one, and then um, then it's awesome. Yeah, and then we basically have to 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 draw that, um, and then we have we have one hour, and then that's that's it. You can, if you want to spend longer, uh, you can, but most people like just stick to the to the one hour. Um, but it's yeah. a good way to just get the day started. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if you're, if you're ever down at, hey, let me know and, uh, we can get you in there. And I know you've been doing a, a lot of speed painting. You had like a full year where you did a speed <laughs> painting every day. Um, yeah. So, you know, you love speed painting. I'd love to get into that again. It's, it's really fun, especially like, um, when you don't get to prepare, you know, you just like, all right, let's just, let's just get into it. Uh, and if more people do it as well, you get so many just uh, fun fun takes, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had uh, there's a there's a, a guy called Rolo, and uh, Rolo did a fantastic piece of. So I think this the theme was Spider Man. Okay. Or I, I it was like I feel like Spider Man or something like that. Okay. And, then, <laughs> and then that can be interpreted in so many different ways. Um, yeah, and uh, the the picture he did was was really awesome, uh, and it had it had nothing to do with the traditional Spider Man, but it uh, oh shit we have Ross Ross is here so hey Ross <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, so yeah yeah that's awesome um, so um, you know he did like a Spider Man kind of inspired thing and it was fucking awesome it was so cool um, awesome. yeah yeah. Um, so uh yeah so it's 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 really good fun um yeah. let me know if you ever have some time we'll make sure we get you in there and get you onto that uh, speed speed paint um train again yeah i'm gonna try i want to i want to restructure my schedule a bit next year and i if if i can slot that in I, I will i will let you know sounds good i'd like to i'd like to get more more painting done next year than, than this yeah, I know you're you're so busy that uh, <laughs> it's hard to catch you. Uh, okay, so there's there's a question here um, that says, um, um, let's see, there's there's several. So here's one: What's the best way to learn slash practice as a new uh, concept concept artist illustrator? What would you what would you say there? Best way to I I think I think the first thing is like. Um, getting really understanding the basics of drawing um and i think it, you know especially this is actually such a great question it's like because we get a lot of portfolios um like I, I look at so much work now and you know if if the basics aren't there it's like every time you try to create your own ideas it's going to be spend so much time trying to make it look right versus like uh, capturing the the cool idea you have uh, so i would say like you know always fundamentals like i would say one of the best things you can practice uh, and always yeah that's totally what about cool. you no same i think the fundamentals are generally just the thing over and over again that uh that i see that um you know needs needs work and i think it's all even like as professional artists too um yeah. it's the thing that we constantly have to come back to i feel like it's like oh okay yeah. Yeah, now i need to brush up on you know perspective or now i need to brush up on uh, line art or line art or shape language or design or whatever it is it, it never it never stops yeah um, yeah things do get better <laughs> but it, it never stops yeah um uh, i agree and then there's uh, there's another uh, another question here that says, 
what's oh yeah yeah that's basically what's the best practices when starting off with illustration um well i see illustration as a little bit of it's like you have to be able to do a little bit of everything you have to do a little bit of anatomy you have to know about perspective you have to know about light you have to know about material definition you have to know about composition so it's like you're trying to kind of balance a bit of everybody or, or of all of the fundamentals essentially um so i think when you're starting out you definitely want to make sure that you know some of these so it's like you know like you have a a, a bit of a, a base in anatomy or you have a, a bit of base in perspective and then then you kind of build from there because if you just start out and you just jump into an illustration i think it's very easy to get overwhelmed and feeling a little bit discouraged so just know that that uh you know a little bit like you need kind of like to build out like se the several parts of the engine before it can kind of uh do something like where uh uh, several of the parts are needed and like to work in harmony in order to produce what it is that you're looking for especially if the 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 goal is something like splash or something that that just takes a lot of time to work up to i would say yeah and, and i think it could lead up to just a lot of frustration when uh when struggling with that stuff you know it's like special illustrations like you like you said you're combining everything and if you're struggling with something, it's just going to make it such a painful pro <laughs> process to go through it. Uh, but yeah. When was the most painful process for you? Um, like, what would you say is like, uh, what was the hardest, like one of the most painful processes in terms of like art, of course, but like what was, what was one that you really remember where you were just like struggling with a piece and you're, you just weren't getting it or, yeah. Uh... I think maybe it was when I first joined Splash uh, because it was so, so different from my personal style in painting and how Valorant was going, where everything was much more simplistic, you know? And like, um, my background is like as an environment painter, so I never really like focused on, the, uh, on sculpting the forms fully, right? It's always been about simplifying it to the utmost. And then on Splash, it's like really really defining it and sculpting it so like the first paintings were um trial by combat <laughs> you can say <laughs> yeah. for, for for my inner artistic soul uh but i i i loved it i loved it um it's i think those are moments where it's like you you get to know yourself a bit better you know and it's like where um you can do more than than you believe you can you know uh, so what about you? I mean, there's definitely several, I would say that um, several uh, moments, especially also on Splash, that was really tough. Um, some went really easy, easy, but others were, you know, uh, were complicated and, uh, and stressful. But I think the one where I really, I had, I recently been working on um, a thing for, uh, the thing that I'm currently hired hired for that I can't say, but there was yeah. a mo moment there where I was really like I was like, how the hell do I achieve all of these things at the same time? And I was just yeah. like, I was like, how the fuck do I do this? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, and and then when you're in that sort of place, you can ha you can you can like you can talk to your friends and they can kind of help kind of like calm your nerves. And yeah. I think I think. Uh, you know, you just have to sit down and just be uh, accept uh, like that you are where you are in the process and you can't speed it up or anything. You just have to be present and kind of take it one step at a time and it's going to be slow, but it just takes time. So, yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm really happy because I think uh, I think it's one of my best pieces I've ever done. So okay, I, I got I got through it uh, and I'm, I'm proud of it. But um, but uh but it was fucking stressful. It was, it was, I was dying. I was like, ah, how do, how do I do this? But, but I think that's awesome because, well, you're like 10 years into your career and you, you ran into something like that, you know, uh, yeah. even, even, even at that stage, right? So I think it's like, you know, 
everybody <laughs> no matter how far you get right there's always going to be something that would be like this behemoth of a image to try and, or, or illustration whatever it is to try and overcome uh, yeah. which i think i think that's the fun part about art you know it's like you know <laughs> you never know what what uh, what problem you might encounter it's, yeah and and i think also like with maybe that's like the thing kind of going back to the question of like what to practice or whatever it's like i think wherever you are you always want to find that edge like it's an it's really an edge of like you're out of your comfort zone but it's achievable you want to be on that edge all the time because so you're if you're out of your comfort zone and the thing that you're aiming for is way like beyond your reach like you, yeah. d you just can't do it and again you will feel demotivated and you'll feel defeated in a sense um and you if you do something that's in your comfort zone all the time then you won't really move as much so that edge is like really perfect to see if you can you can be so even if you're you know 10 years in or whatever you still struggle because you just yeah. you try to you try to find where that edge is for you and then try to be there and, and push yourself yeah yeah i agree what would you say was the piece that you're the least um, proud of? <laughs> Ooh. Like the one where you're like, fuck, I, sc I screwed up here. Ah, oh, man. <sighs> How do I? I, I think I think for myself it's like I always want to be uh, be able to stand behind every piece uh, I make uh, and like you know the, the typical thing is like you want to be able to um, have a new portfolio right that is like the definition of like this is good enough to go into my portfolio right um, and I think it's like there was one piece i don't want to say here <laughs> but uh i was um uh, it was like i just i just need to get this done you know uh and and just just move on with my life forget it ever happened <laughs> <laughs> and and just just forget it gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah no those are hard it's like oh man it's like yeah i i i i, I totally I relate to the feeling. Uh, I've definitely felt that several times, and I think there was one I remember mine very clearly. Uh, there's, there's okay. been several. It was a uh, soul stealer vein, but I would say that one was partly me and also partly the process of how that went down. But soul stealer vein, I was not very proud of. I think. Um, yeah, I, I had had pr almost like rendered out the the picture at one point but yeah. the the anim, anatomy anatomy and pose wasn't great it wasn't like it wasn't wasn't quite there so i yeah. got the feedback to change the body and it was like was in, like a pretty big change i think it was like the entire like arms and lower body was completely changed right it was like fuck oh, it was like no. and it was at the place where it's like i this was done <laughs> so it's like oh, i was like no. i had to go back and do that and the time was kind of um was 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 limited so that one was painful um but you know you at, in that moment she just in those moments you just got to do whatever you got to do and try to pull through and but yeah that was uh that was uh that was rough uh and then the other one was world breaker nasses and hecarim um i remember that one being really tricky i felt really good about it going into it um and then um like they were what's kinda, huh yeah go ahead go ahead no they were like uh they were kind of glowing up from the inside so they were like purple and they were glowing up from the inside i was like how do i make a whole scene with these two giants that are kind of like glowing from the inside um yeah so, so that was that was uh, tricky uh i'm not very proud of that one and i remember that was the i came to la in that time and uh, I had to kind of sit and, and, and watch uh, Alex wrap it up for me. Um, and that felt shitty, right? Because you're like, you don't want to feel <laughs> like you're a burden to anybody. So, yeah, yeah. So I felt bad. It turned out great in the end, though. Yeah, it turned out okay. Um, but uh, I felt really bad because it was like, I felt, I just kind of like arrived and I felt like Alex uh, 
had to kind of like clean up my mess. Um, yeah. And, um, and, yeah, he's uh, so good. He's awesome. He's so, and yeah. and I know I know too that Alex wouldn't. He wouldn't think that like oh, Ism, don't worry about it and everything. But you know, yeah. young 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 Ism definitely definitely worried, <laughs> definitely worried about it. Um, yeah. So so yeah. Um, but I see that there's a, a bunch of a uh, bunch of uh, questions. So let's just quickly do it. Uh, Marco. Okay uh is the brush uh, using part of one of your brush packs uh, oh yeah so this is uh this is the two brush packs so this is both basic and line decker so this is part of um the basic one i believe so this is the i believe it's called the triforce um i gave them names but i normally just watch them as thumbnails here um so it's triforce and then for the smudger i am using um this one down here it's also called hot number 100 and a 68 um so i'm using these two for this sort of demo and just doing that combination um so yeah that's about it um yeah that's that's kind of like what i'm using uh there's a question here i think that's maybe for you um let me just read the, okay. read it aloud it says for Val valorant slash lol stylized art what would you say are the basics to move towards that art um art style and the best software is for them I'm applying to university next year and would like to gain some skills there. Um, I would say, I mean, you can use whatever software you want, right? But I think Photoshop is sort of the standard. You sort of get everything you need, but I know a lot of people use Studio Clip Paint, you know, which is, uh, I think it's a cheaper option as well. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. uh, they have a lot of really cool features that Photoshop doesn't even have, but I think Photoshop is it's the one I use, and I think you use it as well. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I think for, for Valorant at least, and maybe you can take League, uh, is definitely like, um, you know, finding ways of simplifying shapes and forms. Uh, but to do that, you really have to understand the, the underlying structure of it as well. Because to simplifying a shape and form that uh, you don't quite get it tends to look a bit weird uh and i think that was one thing that we struggled we spent a lot of time on the promo work for valorant holy shit <laughs> and we look at them they're like oh they're kind of simplistic right but it took so much time to uh find the cool shapes and i know uh suke yeah, fucking fantastic artist an amazing guy to work with josh as well uh they were so great at just pushing us to really really find the coolest shapes that we could find within the the canvas we had to work with so i i, I would say for valorant it's like definitely like simplicity and finding the the best shapes you can find yeah i think i think with that i mean especially for valorant too right because it's so yeah. it's so graphic it's so punchy it's like yeah. in your face um so totally um totally agree i think the, the graphicness is majorly important with uh with valorant i think for league it's it's similar right especially whenever you're doing stylized stuff it's you need to know a bit of realism because you're basically taking realism and you know you're st stylizing it so you can't really do that if you don't understand the the structure and the kind of anatomy things are built on so you're gonna need a uh fundamentals and anatomy um and then from there you can start to stylize um i would say um so it's a bit of both like hmm. yeah yeah i mean for lee gets like if it's splash art you need to be good at like almost like you need to wield the all the fundamentals uh at least somehow you know i would say in intermediate or above um for some of it but you can also get away with i guess lacking a bit on, on on some but i think we all have like each our like superpower as artists like there are some things that we feel more comfortable with than others and then you know you try to work on the the areas that you're 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 lacking a little bit in yeah wow but yeah it's it's a it's a tricky thing it's 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 something that takes a long time essentially um i think too with uh, what you said with uh, clip studio paint i think that's a really good place to start um yeah and it's really like the it's getting really really good like um, yeah 
it's it's crazy what they're able to to do and it's also less expensive and when you're starting yeah. out that is definitely a factor so i yeah. think photoshop is too expensive man like especially if you're yeah. If you're starting out, man, that that regular fee, if, if you don't even have income, it's too much, you know, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, and I know Clip Studio Paint, they have a lot of, uh, I played around with it a bit a few years ago, they had a lot of really cool tools, they had some 3D, they had, they had these brushes, I think you maybe even showed it to me, it's like that yeah. randomly generates like foliage and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super super cool stuff uh, i really wonder if photoshop will try to touch on that stuff as well yep yeah well it, it basically it doesn't just take one sample it has like three samples that it switches between i'm like that was to me that was like whoa like why yeah. is, why is this not a <laughs> job <laughs> so yeah so yeah there's uh there's somebody here rex asks um, is it possible to become semi-professional in five years when you start out at almost zero? Yeah, of course. I I think. Uh, can I go first on this one? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, go for it. I think it's like there's a certain uh, mileage or uh, chunk of work you need to go through, right? Uh, whether you spread it over ten years or it's even possible probably in one year if you go super hard, you know? Uh, and it's just like, how how do you want to stagger it out? Uh, I think my mindset is like, you sort of want to go through that as quick as possible so you can get to the good stuff, you know? Uh, we get to draw cool stuff for uh, that you really want to draw, but uh, you can easily do it in five years, right? It's just a, a certain, certain amount of work you need to go through within those five years. And I would say, <laughs> I would take the other side of that, that thing. So you get both. Um, but I, 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 I think it like, I agree on most part also with what I'd say is saying, but I think remember too, that the faster you do it, the higher a price you often pay. Um, yeah. so yeah. That, the more you push yourself in that sort of sense, you will also run into that, you know, like your mental health might not do so well or. Like you don't have a lot of, uh, you don't, haven't really spent time, you know, socializing or being with friends and stuff like that. And that sort of stuff you can start feeling after a bit too. Um, so um, I think that, I think Etty also touched upon is like, find that balance that feels right for you. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, you know, like uh, you, uh, you, you, you go for that, but five years, I think is is definitely doable i think i started taking it more seriously when i was 18 and then uh around you know uh what's that four years later i was i was kind of i had my first internship in the in the industry where i met ate and uh and that was that was four years um and i got my first job like five and a half years after i started so i think it's possible yeah. I think so too. What about you, Asi? Like, have you ever, have you actually ever counted? Uh, I think for me it was two years, but like you said, it definitely took a <laughs> uh, a health toll. I was, I would say, and I went full hermit mode where I just like got into like, uh, just like the only thing is like. How, and I was working full time at a point as well, so I had to balance uh, a job that uh, it was like a what do you call it? Uh, it was an internship, but it was mostly like I was running the office. It was like the it's an office manager. You're like, yeah, right you're yeah. you can or like a, if you say it in like a sports term, I think it's called like a, a water boy. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> what a boy sounds like. I just think about the movie of Adam Sandler, so I don't know if it was that. <laughs> you okay, know? okay, no worries. Uh, uh, but yeah, but you're, I, you're, you're just doing everybody else's tasks that they didn't want to do. Yeah, like what I would buy them breakfast every Monday morning. I would like greet whenever there's deliveries and stuff. And that was like my full time job, right? At a commercial agency. Uh, and when I was doing that, it's like, uh, you know, I had I had to do those eight hours in, in in a day. I could not 
get those eight hours away from from that work and then i had to like all right how can i maximize getting uh, whatever time I have left to drawing as much as I can, you know, it's a trade off, right? Because you only have so limited amount of time in your day, you know, and what are you willing to trade off right for 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 painting time? And I think it comes down to like how how important is something to you uh, and, and making decisions based off of that. Yep. Totally agree. There was a follow up question here. Uh, can you prove by going really slow? Do you think working five hours over a week, over 10 years for work the same as doing the same amount in a year? What do you think about that? I think, I think no. Um, let me try to explain why. I think maybe there is a way. Maybe I'm, I'm completely wrong with this, but my God reaction was a little bit no, because if it's over 10 years, um, then you have to remember too that the landscape is changing. Like yep. the, the technology is changing every, and the industry is changing with it. And 10 years is a long time. Like a lot of stuff can happen in 10 years. Yeah. So I think that might be too slow. Um, yeah, that, that's my gut, my gut feeling. I think so too. Uh, and I think not only does the landscape change, your lifestyle is going to change as well. You know, definitely true. But I think it would be hard, maybe impossible, but like to keep that because you know think about it like after 10 years do you want an entry job right uh if you start when you're 20 do you want to start uh, a brand new career when you're 30 maybe you do maybe maybe you don't maybe the current job you're at you feel like it'd be too much of a step back uh and i think at at that age in particularly i don't think many people are willing to to do that right so it's also thinking about like not only uh the industry will change, but like, where are you going to be in your life 10 years from now, which is probably going to be a massive change, you know? Uh, so. Very good point. Very good point. Yeah, no, nah, it's, it's a good question though. It's like, I, I, I never thought of it that way, but, uh, yeah, it's good. So basically, uh, Rolo here says, lol, Ete the water boy, gotta start somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I even, I even had a tear below that <laughs> where I started. Uh, so, I, I did, uh, yeah, God, um, it was so awful. <laughs> it was, uh, you see these people who cut grass? I think I told you the story probably yeah, like several did. times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, I was working where you cut grass, basically. Um, uh, for like a, uh, three months and where I, you walk around with these machines that just shreds everything you know it's like uh they have like a wire that just uh, evaporates grass you know uh, and everything in the grass as well and where i was working like people were just not picking up after their dogs you know and if you hit a turd man you just get sprayed and shit <laughs> no. you know it was so goddamn awful. It happened so often as well. I forgot that part. Yeah. So uh, I'd say the water boy was a tear up. But uh, yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? Got to start somewhere. Totally. Yeah. Um, I remember um, uh, my first job. With, I told you this too. I think we, we had like a talk or something in the in the studio about these sort of things. But first job was in a sawmill um like like where we had to like kind of like glue two pieces of, of tree together and then kind of put it this through this like cutter right and then glue two pieces together and put it through the cutter it's like very labor um yeah. uh, repeat repetition and just like not not very fun but um yeah. uh i lasted like two weeks and then i was like can't do this <laughs> i was yeah. like i want to do something else and i was like 14 i think at the time <laughs> uh, so yeah. I, was, I was very young and my dad was like kind of like hey try it out see if you like it you know and and uh, it was through like a friend uh so but um but uh i was like mm, can't can't this is not it and then essentially when on my 15th birthday i remember this super clearly on 15th birthday uh, i get a call uh because i had dropped uh application uh there's a there's a nearby zoo um like a place that has like you know animals and all that so i was working yeah, yeah. i applied to a zoo and um and they called and asked me if i wanted the job i was like absolutely and it was kind of like a little bit like a water boy too like you know filling up the store uh 
bringing yeah. in boxes, all that, and cleaning the toilets. Oh, no. I, I know. And I never like remember, like I'll never forget some of the toilets that I had to clean. It's just like, oh, God. some people just don't know how to use the toilet. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but uh, I ended up being there for five years. Um, I uh, worked there from when I was 15 to I was almost 21. And, yeah. um, and but did you go up in tears? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. No, no. I, oh, yeah, okay. I, I didn't <laughs> clean toilets for five years. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, no, no. I definitely went up in tears. Um, so, and uh, it was a great place to work, honestly. I, I learned so many uh, valuable things there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's important getting those experience, you know, no matter how, uh, no pun taken, how shitty it is. But, oh uh, my God. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is, it is important to, to, to do those. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Um, let's see. Uh, there's some more questions here. Um, one sec, let me see. Uh, Rex asks, uh, I get the stuff that you mentioned one have to go through the f through first before reaching the good stuff is fundamentals, right? Yeah. Or not? Um, do you want to answer that? I got a little bit confused here. So, sorry, can you repeat I it? Don't know, it's, it's just, I guess the stuff, so basically stuff that you mentioned uh, had uh, that one had to go through first before one reaches the good stuff is fundamentals, right? Yeah, I would say definitely start at fundamentals. It's like, yeah. um, like sometimes like a lot of people, they like, I want to do like, and then they would say like, uh, incredible, you know, illustration that somebody had, has taken like, I don't know, like 70 years or something to work up to, to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit like, kind of like looking at a Olympic, uh, I don't know, uh, athlete. And kind of be like, I want to do that. But it's like, yeah, you, you got to go through all the training and all the running and before you're able yeah. to run at that speed and, and all that. So um, so you start with the basics and then slowly over time, uh, you will improve and you'll get better and you'll push push the, the boundaries. Yeah. That sort of sense. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think especially like when you see people's YouTube video or even when you just see a finished painting, right? You never see like all the hidden uh, uh, work behind it. And it's just easily be like, uh, I want to do that. Uh, I remember I used to watch uh, Feng Zeus videos back on YouTube. Like this was, this was probably 10 years ago, you know, where he would do like these amazing speed paints, right? Like he just put a silhouette down and just make these coolest things out of these silhouettes, you know, even though it looked like blobs from the beginning. I'd be like, this is so easy, you know. Everybody, can, everybody can do this. Obviously, you just put blobs, and then you just uh, put some highlights, and you have a spaceship, right? <laughs> or like a really cool gun, uh, and uh, you know, it's just so much hidden knowledge that you don't see when when someone, uh, at least you know, I didn't know that when, when he was doing these demos, like uh, so. I love. I have a great analogy for that for that one. It's like it's like it's like watching the cars of the 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 wheels of the car turn without having any clue about what the what is happening inside <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah it's a it's a lot of parts that are working uh, in sync with each other yeah. uh, there's a question here that says how do you maintain your own personal style when working on other IP styles all the time uh, you want to start <laughs> I was about to think like if you were gonna take this one, uh, I I can I can start. Um, hmm, how do you maintain? I mean, I think if you're working on somebody like if you're if if you're working on somebody else's project all the time and you don't have time to kind of like oh sorry if you don't have time to work on any of your own personal work. Um, that just takes a toll over time. You can do it for a bit, uh, but if you don't do anything for yourself, from at least speaking from per personal experience, uh, it really affects me. Like, um, uh, I just, I just, I'm not happy um, in that sort of sense. So, uh, you know, in an ideal world, uh, you would 
uh, make a bit, carve out a little bit of time for you to do kind of a little bit of yours too. But I understand too, sometimes you are feeling exhausted after work and you just don't feel like sitting down and, and draw some more when you get back home. Um, but I think that your style or your personal taste and all that will, will always kind of be there. Um, sometimes it's a little bit like biking. You know, if you've worked in another style for a long time, you kind of have to come back to it and you have to kind of like rediscover it too. And I think style is style for me. And maybe I'm not the right person to talk about with style because I guess I'm a little bit of a, a jack of all trades where I think it's more like I see styles as um, uh, as a, as just as anything else in, in terms of image making. So you can have a preferred style, of course, but if you let's say if you have to make a picture that is very lighthearted and fun um, and have to kind of communicate those feelings, then making something that is more stylized, something that's bright in colors, um, that sort of style, right, is better at communicating that uh, than something that's very muted and realistic. Um, muted and realistic often gets uh, kind of like to be more um, serious or more mature because it's, it's you know, it's realism essentially. It's not a, it's that sort of sense of fantasy, but you can of course twist it and flip it, but I, would, I definitely see styles as, as something that you can change depending on what it is that you're trying to communicate or working on. So I don't yeah. think it's a static thing and I think it's always moving. So like sometimes when we say my style, like it's it's gonna come out the way it's gonna come out and then that's gonna be my style um yeah what what do you think guys maybe you're you think completely different uh i i think it's i i agree with everything you said i think it's actually i would add to it i think it's super super important that you do your own work you know outside of whatever work you do for someone else because um i think i i saw actually uh without saying any name of someone who uh all the work they did was for a company right um and when that work gets scrapped it feels really bad if you don't have any any personal work because like if if all the work you do is like uh commercial work and then that doesn't get used it kind of feels like you failed as an artist because that's all you did right and i think it's kind of important to have a bit of a detachment where, you know, you do the commercial work uh, or for, for whoever you're working with and really try to adapt to the style. But you always have to have your own thing that you go back to, and especially like for the you need that sandbox time. Uh, I think it's really, really important uh, to, to keep growing because I also think that is like a way of keeping your uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, frustration sometimes can be frustrating if you don't agree with feedback and stuff is to know that uh, you can always do your takes on your own things in your own time it's really important um, but I think I think also like you know you, you can always adapt to different styles and like you can always get things to feel consistent but at the end of the day like for, for me like I can tell from all the splashes I know exactly who painted what <laughs> you know yeah. uh, the but i think maybe someone who isn't an artist or worked on the team it's it might be harder to tell you know but it's for me it's very distinct who painted what and I, they have all their own unique flavors to it you know even though it's under one big umbrella you know uh, so totally. does that does that I, I, yeah, yeah i love yeah that's a great i think that's that's i honestly think that's a great way of saying it because i think a lot of people when they look at something like like splash art right it's like um it feels all the same or it feels cohesive which is good yeah. because that's that's what we're trying to do we're trying to say like hey how can we take all these different voices and find a way to make sure that it all feels like it fits in the same universe and everything but yeah. i totally agree i can i could tell if something is a alex flores or a pen or whatever it's yeah. like you know yeah. like you can just tell you know their you know their their little choices and everything and, and that just shines through so even though we're trying to work on something like that it, you know the, the 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 style still still comes through it's your hand that will do its movements a certain way because it's it's it that's just how it does yeah and i think that's awesome you know it, it gives everything that unique flavor to something uh, and I, I think it would be a shame if a project didn't have that uh, on, on, uh, or like a yeah 
without uh, yeah totally i think also like the way you for example did uh splashes was 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 you can tell that it was you right it's like it had like that that touch to it so yeah um yeah so yeah don't worry i don't worry too much about your own style but i think the main thing is is i think the main point from our answers was more make sure that you're doing things for you yeah that's important um and then style will naturally follow so don't worry so much about the style just make sure that you at least carve out some time for you so it, everything doesn't just become um uh, student work or not in student work uh client work yeah it was actually uh i heard that from it's one of craig mullen's demos i don't remember which one um but he brought up this and it makes so much sense you know because to to really grow as an artist you have to you know to, to learn how to draw you're just failing a bunch of a bunch of times right you're not yeah, <laughs> you're not making so successful true. images right you're just <laughs> trying stuff out it doesn't work you learn something but it's you know and you, and you need that freedom to grow uh, but i think in a in a professional environment it's the opposite where you yeah. cannot do that <laughs> you know it has to work every single time you know um and that sort of like counters the way of how you want to grow as an artist uh so that's where he was saying which i i really really agree with it's like you need that balance of time where you uh just fail right uh it doesn't have to be anything successful you can try whatever you want to try you know i think personal work is like the best way to do it uh, and then you have the commercial time where you approach it with you can experiment a bit right it doesn't have to be bulletproof but the success rate have to be there right uh, so totally agree it's such, uh, it's such a hard balance to do sometimes like i remember yeah. i remember the days where i would go to work right work on splash and come home and i would just not feel like drawing anything um yeah. i was just so tired and done and I, I didn't have any any energy so i think that that's also why I like um like for example with what i'm doing now with the speed painting in the morning and the warm-up paintings i feel energized i feel like i'm ready to work and i also yeah. feel like i was productive and I, I created something for me just like in an hour and that that's like that's okay and then i can kind of like uh you know move on with the day um so I think that's honestly it's a it's a really great ritual that I'm planning to keep. Yeah. Someone is asking uh, any specific artist you've taken inspiration from. Can I start with that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Joe Mad, uh, Joe yeah. Mad, Paul Richards, Paul Bonner, Jesper Rising. Uh, Man, there's too many. There's so, the, the <laughs> list is long. Ian McKeg, uh, Craig Mullins, um, Alex Flores, uh, Jason Chen, Marco Jojovic. Um, man, there's too many. Like, yeah. yeah, there's there's so many good artists out there, and there's so many good artists that, like, you never heard of. Like that don't yeah. do that don't do any sort of like social media or anything they're just beasts and they're hiding out there in the and the, they're lurking in the shadows once you, <laughs> yeah. once you know them you're like holy moly like cannot believe that this person is existing and the world does know about it in that sort of sense or a lot of people don't know about them like um there, there are some of those people that are just absolutely incredible and they're just not they don't want to do that sort of uh whole social media thing they're just in it for the creativity and and all that and that's that's all respect to that man um but there's some there's some good ones to name a few yeah. per, uh, <laughs> per, peral uh, sorry um Gerald peral yeah Gerald is incredible uh he does it a little bit but uh not as much uh roberto castro yep <laughs> you know the two yeah uh, uh, beast Jeez, yeah. I cannot believe how good that man is. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's many, 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 many more. Um, so, yeah. What about you? I, like, uh, who who inspired you? 
Um, a lot of the name you mentioned, but I think for me, one of like uh, probably really, really big ones was probably Mullins. And there's a Swedish artist called uh, John Liberto. Uh, fantastic guy. I actually got to meet him once as well. We, we interviewed him for Riot. Uh, I pushed so hard to get him on board, but things just didn't line up. Uh, absolutely amazing guy. Uh, and what he did, it, this was like really early days where there's like a Swedish forum where there was like a, a thread where uh, it's like a speed paint thread. And it was him and a few other people, but I remember particularly him uh, who just posts these incredible images. And it's like, this was really early. You know, if you look at like, uh, concept art like uh, if you go back 10 years it looks completely different in quality you know yeah and i feel like him and mullins uh they were uh, many uh, several other artists they were really ahead of the curve on what uh good commercial uh, good concept art could look like or illustration like digitally uh, and that was like just every time i went to that third my mind just got blown you know uh, so that was super, super cool to see. Uh, and, and about the, the hidden artist, like the, I mean, call it, I, I remember there was, I always wondered about this. This was, this was also really early, uh, when I was getting into it. And this was for, uh, was it for, ba I might, might've been for Battlefield 2. And there was these paintings that were just f fucking fantastic. Environments, characters, there was someone who was absolutely incredible <laughs> who worked on those games. I had no idea who it was, you know, and I tried so hard to figure that out. Maybe one day I'll find out. Uh, but I always used to look at those paintings uh, and just like, who is this incredible mystery artist? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, there's there's so many of them out there. It's, it's really yeah. incredible. Uh, yeah. I've... I don't know. I'm I'm really happy. Like, uh, it's it's uh, we get to get we get so much good art in these times where it's like it can just be sh you know, it can be uh, shared um, eat more easy than without the internet. So yeah, very lucky. Yeah. Um, I think there's uh, uh there's a bunch of questions. I'm sorry. Like, uh, I get to the chat once in a while. Uh, here it says this is from a uh, Kuya Yapi. Uh, JP, sorry, Kuya JP. Um, I assume this is from the Philippines because Kuya means brother, but I'm not sure. Let's see. You mentioned having no energy at some point. How did you recharge your batteries while still working full time, Espen? Uh, I can start and then uh, I would love to hear you too, Ete, because some, sometimes I think what works for one person might not work for another, but. Um, but I think also sometimes there are overlaps. Um, so for me, when I was feeling um, like kind of burned out, uh, there are several things. I think first off, try to see if you can take work off. Like just, you know, ask, just ask for it. And if you have, if you have any holidays left or you can take vacation days, try to take them. Um, time off definitely works um yeah uh that's that's one if you if that's not a possibility um i think exercise does a whole lot especially to me like if i definitely feel that if i'm not moving my body or anything it drastically affects my mood um yeah so ex exercise is is key um or, or or getting out in nature like hiking or being in a forest or whatever it is like get away from that screen um yeah. get out get some air spend time with people um yeah. very simple sort of things but like socialize move your body be in nature like yeah that always worked for me those 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 three things but yeah what about what about you at say uh I think I would agree with the exercise thing, I, I, especially the mood, man. Like I sometimes uh, when when I haven't exercised, I feel like more on edge, right? Uh, but yeah. every time, especially if you when you do it in the morning, it's like a such a clear contrast in in your emotion. Uh, and I'm guessing it's some 
I read somewhere that you released some some something in your body. I forgot the name of it. Uh, it just uh, you feel better. Is it serotonin? Uh, but, yeah, I th I think so. I I don't remember exactly, but it okay. it it really it really helps with your well being as a person. Yeah. Uh, and I think for me, what 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 has always helped is sort of knowing where where you want to go. Uh, like as an artist and uh, and as a person, and I think when when times get tough, if you if you don't know where you're going, where you're steering that ship, you know, uh, it can uh, it can get very difficult. I would say. I but as long as you have that compass, you know, even though there's a lot of fog, maybe you know there's. <laughs> I don't know sharks in the water, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. You know, you know where you where you're going. Yeah, and even if you don't know, kind of like where you're going, I definitely had moments of in my career where it's like, I don't know where I'm going. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm figuring that out. Um, and I can also be like, it it can be, it can be really hard. It can be hard because you feel like you know, like what's what's this sort of thing. But I think in those moments, sometimes. You know, allowing yourself just to be present with where you are right now, and then yeah. you can lay. You can definitely, you know, make a plan for the future. Um, and you, I think, you need that in some sort of way of like, you know, because you have an ideal, you know, within you too that kind of lets you bug. It bugs you when you're not like living up to it or doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So um, you gotta also listen to to that sort of inner voice of like, you know, like oh um you know i should probably do something about that this but i think uh yeah i agree i think i started uh i started exercising way more and lifting weights again after coming back to denmark and it changed everything i was so much more productive um yeah. and just felt um, way better so yeah. if you don't know where to start just start with exercising just do it three times a week start there like don't do a million things just to start doing one thing and start simple and then you need to get the ball rolling uh, and it, there's only one way to do it which is slow there's this really nice um quote i'd say i would love to hear what you think about it but because i okay. I'm, when i heard it i was like oh i love it um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and it says um the fastest way to get where you want to be is slowly mm. i think that's pretty good uh right? Yeah, because it's also about the journey. It's not about the destination, right? Yeah. You know, uh, it's just gotta. I think sometimes it's hard. You get a bit caught up in, at least for myself. You know, it's just like, oh, gotta get there, gotta get there. But it's like not really enjoying the now, uh, which is something I just uh, <laughs> need to work on. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's a work in progress. And it's it's a balance, I think, because if you're too much in 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 kind of like the now or something like what it can also happen is you 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 kind of uh you don't think about the future right or you don't plan for it or so it's, yeah, it's a yeah. bit of both i think you need to be dynamic i think you need to be able to switch between of like hey now i need to start making you know like some sacrifices so that you know in a future yeah. situation i i stand stronger so uh, it's yeah. definitely it's a constant struggle between the two and i think both uh, needs to be there it's not just one yeah um let's see um let's see by the way i had a chance to draw next to you during the light box and didn't really get the chance to say it but it was a real pleasure <laughs> no worries <laughs> it was a pleasure <laughs> to draw with you two wins um but um but yeah, uh, do you have any uh, any questions on your on your end on your stream, and we can take some of those? Yeah, someone say, do you have any higher education? Did it help? Did it help you? If you do, do you wanna do you wanna go first? Because I know you have. <laughs> I love you because I know that you have. Uh, <laughs> uh, sure, I'll start. Uh, yeah um yeah i do i do have uh i have a bachelor degree uh so essentially i took high school and after high school it was funny because uh my uh how do you say my um education guidance person in elementary school told me 
that I shouldn't apply for high school because he thought that I wouldn't make it. Okay. And I was like, you can't tell me that. Like, it's like, I got Just so hell. mad. I got so mad. And I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. And then I, then I did it. Um, but I, that was also what I wanted to do. But I think he put a bit more extra fire on that, on that, uh, or a bit more, more wood on that fire. Yeah. Um, but I finished that, um, and I wouldn't say I was a great student. I think I was a very average student. Um, yeah, but I, I did it and, uh, and then I did, uh, um, took a bachelor degree, uh, at a place that's called the animation workshop, which is in Viborg in Denmark. Uh, and it's, it's a really, it's a really good school. Uh, I've, it's been a long time since I've been there, so I don't know if it's the same, but I, I, back then it was really good. Um, and uh, really enjoyed it. I think the, the thing that I learned the most from was the people, uh, my fellow students and um, and just kind of like seeing how everybody was, was working differently. And I remember we were having so many very talented people in our, in our, uh, in our, what's it called class. And like, there's this guy called Frederick Storm too, which was like, he was working early with ZBrush and he was so fast and everybody was just like, what the f like what is this person like who is this person it's like and he's a student and he was way yeah. better than one of like several of our instructors um so oh, man. yeah yeah what so, does he do now uh i believe he has his own uh studio called uh monkey tennis and like oh. a small animation studio i'm not quite sure if he's still doing that but that he was doing that for a bit um but wonderful wonderful guy very stylized very expressive and everything but um I've never used the bachelor degree really like nobody has really asked for it. I think the only, the only time where it came in handy was when I had to apply for a visa, um, for the U S but it's not necessary to have a bachelor in order to get a visa, but I think it helped a little bit. Yeah. But that's, that's it. Nobody cares if you have a, a bachelor degree in arts or something. They only care if you can make a pretty product like, or a good product, you know, that's it yeah they don't, they don't care about your degree but uh but what about you i say what you what uh yeah I, I i really wanted to go to school but like the the i i didn't know about the one in denmark at the time uh but the ones i looked at was uh art center and fcd and for for the budget i have which was zero dollars <laughs> it was too much uh and the Swedish ones I never got into, so I had to sort of like uh, learn on my own. But I would say also kind of same where, you know, whenever you apply somewhere, the, the degree is not like what matters, just the portfolio. But what has been said is true. It's like, I remember we applied for visa as well. That's where like it would have made things a bit quicker and faster if I had some degree of a sort, you know. Uh, but other than that, I don't think for any job they would ever ask for that. I totally agree. Like, do you ever ask, like, now that you're in the position of hiring people, like, do you ever ask somebody, if, like, hey, do you have a master's degree or do you have a bachelor's <laughs> no. degree? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Uh, okay. It's, uh, uh, people actually write it, though. Uh, but it's really like, you know, I just I just go to perform it straight away because that's, you know... Uh, it's sort of irrelevant for the work we do if you have a degree or not. I think for other professions, it is important, you know. Um, but I think for art in particular, it's purely on what you can do and you can easily show it, you know. Uh, whether you have a degree or not, it doesn't doesn't make the, the difference. Yeah, I think that's... And I think especially if you're, let's say you're living in the US, uh, I'd say be careful because I think that there's a lot of schools there that are uh, extremely expensive and where, uh, you know, uh, it's just not worth it. Um, so if you're in the States, you're thinking about a school or something like consider yeah. consider doing something online because there's a lot better online options out there, um, especially yeah. in these days. There, the information is out there. It's just uh, it's not worth getting a. Uh, in a huge uh, depth, uh, if you can avoid it, uh, if you if that's where you are in in your in your, in your journey. So, yeah, that's but, actually 
a great yeah. call out because I think not only that to add upon it, you can probably find like uh, more condensed like art programs from artists or even a mentorship, right? Yeah. Uh, that's also something that you know you can sort of pick the teacher that you want if they because a lot I know a lot of artists nowadays they offer mentorships, you know, uh, there is the more classroom oriented, but there's also like the more individually targeted ones as well, you know, so uh, there, there's a lot of options uh, of learning. And I think, um, especially for us, probably more cost effective ways than going to, to a school, I think. Definitely. Definitely. Um, let's see. Um, uh, here's one. Uh, it's from Edit Eka. It says, "What is your view about using someone else's work as poses reference for your own work? Is it considered cheating or copying other artists? What do you think, Essay?" Uh, I think if you're learning, you know, use as much of other people's work as you want. You know, like reference it copy it do whatever you want if your personal work but whenever you work for someone else uh, i would try to stay away from that and look uh like you can obviously reference things but don't copy stuff one to one like rather find stuff in the real world or your own poses but if you look for stylization i think it's great to look at other people's work uh, but i would be careful with uh, using someone's work for like official uh commercial work what about you? I think you can. I mean, reference. I'm not a. I'm not a opposed to reference, but if I think it's if if it is one to one, um, yeah, you want to be careful with that for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, you can see if you can take the the essence maybe from what it is that you're, you, that you find that is it's doing really well, and then add to it or kind of like do it in your way or. Um, but it it like it needs to look different um, than whatever it is that you're you're aiming for. So yeah, I think it's, it's a slippery slope, and I think it's definitely worth being careful with it. I think what's really great the one you did with the line decker stream, where you took a style, but you sort of did your own like you know it's a different subject, but it's same like you're clearly referencing an artist. I think that is super super cool and really valuable, and there's uh i think you even can learn a lot by doing that so i think that's uh i don't know where where they can it's on Procos channel yeah or is it up on yours no it's on it's on it's on Procos channel um yeah so essentially it's it's called if you just look up espen rasmussen or espen lash uh and or you just write espen and line decker in the same thing it should pop up there but that started out as kind of like in the start i just i really like line decker and his work and I wanted to study and try to understand and break it down and try to see, understand how he was thinking. And, um, and yeah. Um, and then started with kind of just copying, right. Doing master studies. Uh, and then eventually over time, I was kind of getting more, more of a hang of it. And then one study led to the other. And then I started to do like a Garen in a sort of line decker style it's like oh that went okay it's like a, some some of the things started to stick and then proco reached out if i wanted to do a collaboration and then i was like okay let's let's do it and then the that little study kind of like grew into becoming a, a beast of of, <laughs> of of making both like a, you know a youtube video which i hadn't fully really done before uh, that uh, and also like you know, using this sort of knowledge and these uh, studies, um, and that was yeah, that was uh, that was that was hardcore. I think that I think because I had to paint that after work, after or before <laughs> work, and and uh, I think I think in total it was like twelve hours or maybe 13, 14 hours. It was a long time. I feel really bad for the people that had to edit all of that footage. <laughs> because they yeah. made it look so good but like yeah like i was yawning i was like sitting with my hands oh, just no. like being frustrated i was like uh, or i think there's even a point where it's just like just like sitting and squaring uh s sorry swearing when i was just like sitting and drawing it's just like this is shit this is bad this is horrible it's just like 
uh, being, you know, so, you know, it's, it's just part of it. It's just part yeah. of it. But I think we kind of covered the, the question. Do you have one on your end? Uh, on on the uh, question? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we can both take this one uh, from Adrian. Uh, I'm going to butcher the last name, so I'm not going to say it. But do you miss LA? How was the transition coming back to Europe? Um, we can both take that. That's actually great. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you go. Uh, okay. Well, coming back was incredible. Uh, I do not miss LA. <laughs> I miss <laughs> not even yeah. a bit. No. What? I mean, okay, maybe a little bit, but I would say it's mostly some of the people there. I think, yeah. and then. I do miss a bit of the surfing. I do miss mm -hmm. uh, the hikes, the hiking areas yeah. around. That was my main thing. Um, I do miss the food. The food was really amazing. Um, yeah. So there are things that I miss, but overall, not so much. Um, it was a really great time. I was really happy that I did it. I'm happy that I, I took the journey. I'm happy that I, I did it. Um, but it was time to go back. And then when it was time to go back, it was really hard to make that decision uh, yeah. because there's a lot of uncertainties with that. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's one of the best decisions I've made in my life. So, uh, yeah. but it was also one of the hardest ones, I would say. So, uh, but yeah, don't, don't miss LA particularly much. I really like the current situation and being closer to family and, being able to kind of like get that quality time and and all that is uh it means so much more in the long run you know like i think that's really what it comes down to you have to think about like a long term and you have to kind of like plan for long term um in yeah. the sense of um in the sense of you know like if i stayed in la for the next five ten years or maybe the rest of my life um how would my life look like then or if i st if i then went back to denmark how would my life look like then and you would try to like run that simulation right yeah um and for me i just uh i think i value family too much uh whereas like yeah. you know i i kind of want to have a family of my own and at yeah. some point and i want them to have a relationship with my parents i want to be able to lean on my parents when i'm gonna need that um, You're gonna need that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you I, that. I, I, I'm gonna need yeah. that. So, yeah. so you know, like, um, I don't think I'm gonna be lying at my at on my deathbed, kind of like thinking about you know the splashes I did and how proud I feel about the splashes. Like, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be wishing I had more time with the people I love. Um, I think. Yeah. I think that's really like most of the things that are really meaningful to us are often uh, built in terms of around people so um, yeah and i think you know even when i think about my time there i think about the people like the yeah. colleagues were awesome like yeah um, i agree with that yeah uh but I, it was fun because uh one part was of the you know uh, somebody asked it we, was, we were having a little stream on my discord uh yesterday somebody asked the same thing and the whole thing about like this would be funny to hear what you think about this one too but the whole part about it's always sunny in la um i thought that that was what i wanted when i first kind of got there and i loved it in the start but after yeah. a while i just didn't enjoy it um because really? I felt, yeah because I, f I felt like it was the same day that just repeated over and over again like there's <laughs> okay. there's, there's no seasons there's no seasons yeah. to kind of like remind me of like where we're at where in the year we were and yeah. uh i i don't know like i look back and i'm like boom that was a year i look back boom that's another year it's like it goes so fast yeah um and uh i did not did not miss that part and then also uh if it's really great weather outside and i'm sitting inside in front of a computer and working and drawing i feel bad about sitting inside of the computer and drawing so when yeah. it's gray outside it's gray and it's rainy i'm like Hell yes! Like make, <laughs> make make a you know make a make a cup of coffee and then just 
sit inside work be in front of the computer and i feel great about it. it's like this is cozy this is wonderful yeah. but maybe that's just me i'm i'm a weird person sometimes so but well, how how about you um Etsy, how was your experience uh man i really liked la um i i think also like you said you know obviously some things like um uh, traffic i was not a fan of um and uh I think the food was amazing. The people working, like, I didn't get to know too much people outside of work, but the people at work were absolutely fantastic. Um, but I think, like, kind of like you, you know, like with um, wanting to be closer to family because we're starting a family, um, it was like, all right, you know, what would it be like to, if we don't do that, right? If we fully commit to, uh, because, you know, if you have a family, I don't think you want to move continent. Uh, And we're it's sort of running the same simulation. It's like, all right, we stay here, we have the family, you know, uh, it's it's gonna be so hard for our, our, our kid to see my parents or, or my wife's parents, you know, because it's such a distance to travel uh, because they're all in Europe. Uh, and we felt like uh, it would be better to be to be closer to them, you know, uh, for, for, the, for the kid and bo bo both for us, you know. Uh, I, I like the sun. Uh, I think it was really nice, especially like in Santa Monica, you know, because you get a bit of breeze. But as soon as you went inland, it's like it turned instantly to a sauna. <laughs> If there is no AC, man, it gets very, very warm. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I miss the food a lot and the people. Uh, but I think other aspects, uh, like my neighbor, I did not miss, who used to play a lot of music. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I assume it wasn't good music. No, no, it was not good music. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they had a band. <laughs> That's all gotcha. I have to say. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I totally feel that. Um, but yeah. Like, so what would you say, like, is some of the surprise, like, was there anything kind of moving back to Sweden that kind of surprised you that you kind of like came back and saw from a new light, like something that you maybe took for granted before? Um, was there anything there? Mm, I don't know. Uh, taxes, I forgot how high they were in Sweden. <laughs> Uh, I did not miss that, but uh, yeah, uh, I, th I think that probably the weather was uh, a different, like th the food again, like Sweden. I love Swedish food. It's fantastic, but it's it's very different fl from uh, L.A. food. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I like both. But I think for us, having a family made more sense in, in Sweden than in L.A. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense. Yeah. I hope that hope that answered it. That was a good question. It's actually like um, it's a, it's a big thing, but it's also like I think it depends on where you're from. Like it depends on you know what other options you have. Because I rem like one of my friends, uh, um, he's called Igor. Um, he was from um, Kazakhstan, and you know Kazakhstan and LA. I think also like I would prefer LA. Um, so yeah. So there's also like some things of like, okay, you know, like then you have to, um, you have to make, you know, a choice uh, and each choice have some pros and cons and sacrifices to, to it. So, um, yeah. but you yeah, know, like it depends on whatever country it is that you have in the, in the background too. And, you know, I think we're, we're very spoiled on, on that end. I think both Sweden and, and Denmark are, yeah, are, are I, solid country, countries. I think so too. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, what food did LA have? Hey, hey frogs, um, what food did LA have? I mean, they, they have everything, like, so that's the good part, it's like, everything is there, and it's yeah. amazing quality, like, the, the Mexican food in LA is, was great, uh, especially because we don't really have that much in Europe, uh, yeah. so... Oh my god, I I love the Mexican cuisine. Um, yeah. And then Japanese is great. Like, what was your favorite spot in LA? Like, what, what, what was your go-to spot? Oh man, 
for breakfast or for lunch or for dinner? Because they're all different. <laughs> <laughs> let's do uh, let's do breakfast and dinner. Okay. I think for breakfast, I think I told you about the place, uh, but I was on a quest with my wife to find, first the quest started with finding the best pancakes in LA. So we used to go to, every Saturday, go to a different diner, and my wife would order something different each time, but I was always ordering pancakes. Like, I wanted to find the best pancakes there was. Uh, and then the quest changed to finding the best eggs benedicts, uh, which is really, really tasty dish. Uh, and... We landed on, or I landed on, uh, there was a place called uh, the Snug Harbor. Incredible breakfast. Uh, I think I recommended it to you as well, but super, super good. Um, and for lunch, uh, and Snug Harbor is like traditional American, I think, with a bit of a uh, mix, but very, very, healthy, very, very nice. Uh, and probably one of the favorite dinner places, I think, was a place called Din Tai Fung, which was uh, in a mall, and it's like I think I think it was Chinese, like a bunch of uh, smaller dishes, but it was incredible. The food, uh, I think about it still. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. What about you? Uh, Asunori, uh, love oh, the place. hand rolled sushi, the hand rolled place. Yeah. Oh, I, dude, that was amazing. I would go there whenever I could. Um, yeah, I really. I love that place. Um, and that's yeah. like a Japanese hand rolls. Um, I love that place as well. So good. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that was f food there is just incredible, essentially. Food is really, yeah. really, really good there. Uh, and you can get everything. Like, it has everything there. So, yeah. And definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And particularly, like in Santa Monica, it's very competitive. So everybody has to make great food, you know, <laughs> to be able to pull in the the customers. But it was it was really nice. And it's a, it's actually fairly uh, well priced too, compared to uh, eating out, for example, in in Europe. Um, yeah, I mean, de depends on, of course, where you are in Europe. Uh, but uh, at least from to Denmark, it, from Denmark, it's it's uh, really really good prices. I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody's asking, what tablet do you use? Um, do you want to start? Uh, I work with Cintiq. Uh, I, I don't remember which one. I think it's 22 Pro, uh, but that's the one. I Was use. it the one we had at the office? I think so. Yeah. I think that's the 22 HD something. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I, I think it's that's the one. Yeah. Right. Uh, I normally use an Intuos. Uh, I've been using an Intuos for a very long time, so it's just muscle memory, I think. But I am currently uh, trying um, something that's, I guess, similar to a Cintiq uh, or a drawing sort of screen, which is the Huion Canvas. 24 pro or 22 pro or 24 pro um and uh with the whole kind of like 100k uh uh milestone we did a competition it's still going so if you don't know essentially you can win uh there's free tablets uh from uh, Huion um on the line so that's still there it's on espen lash uh the instagram there uh shameless plug um <laughs> but uh but it's there if you still want to sign up. You just have to like and then tag two, uh, tag two friends. But uh, it's still going. But uh, as part of that thing was like, I uh, agreed to also say like, hey, I'm going to give a, a review on, on this product of theirs. And uh, I'm trying it out and kind of like uh, gathering my feels on it. Um, so far, I really like it. Uh, I actually would dare to say I actually think it's better than the Wacom Cintiq. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I know. But uh, it's it's uh, so far I'm really I'm really uh, I'm really uh, impressed, and it's yeah. way cheaper than uh, than Wacom. I think that's good. They've been sitting on that uh, throne for a while, and it's not a it's a pretty hefty price tag for a Cintiq. You know, yeah. um, it's good to get some competition. I agree. I agree. Um, so um, I'm reviewing that right. Uh, I'm trying that out and playing around with it uh, and then there'll they'll come a review at some point um, um, but really good stuff so far really like it um, yeah 
and it has a 4k monitor it's actually the monitor is incredible um anyway uh, that's I'll, awesome i'll i'll talk about it more in the review but <laughs> let's talk about something else <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, the, the, the winners and get, gets picked on the 25th. Be careful because there are scammers out there. I, I've reported them and I've done whatever I can, but, um, look out for them. They will contact you, say that you're the winner and send you a link and whatever. And don't, don't respond to it. Just please report them and, and block them. But, um, but, uh, on the 25th, I will announce it. I will write it in the stories. So on Espen Lash and not any of the fake ones but on mine um i'll put it up in the stories who won i'll reach out to them personally um and we'll figure it out from there and then essentially uh we'll find out how to how the shipping goes but uh, as far as i um talked with uh, juan they're gonna send it from from their office to to the lucky winners so we'll have free winners but it will be will be uh, announced on the 25th on my stories um but yeah that's awesome. Someone's gonna get a Christmas gift. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and it's the winners are gonna get picked randomly. There's absolutely no system. My hope is that it's gonna be because I was thinking about like, hey, how should we do this? Like, and I was like, hey, maybe people can draw do a drawing and then enter in this competition. But I was like, no, because then you know, essentially, then they're gonna be judged on the drawing or whatever, and there has to be criteria for that and then a person who really needs it um will not you know will not get it yeah so so yeah. it's going to be picked at random and uh -huh. i hope i hope it, it gets out to somebody who can really use it that's cool um uh let's see options here oh this might be fun this is a longer one i was to say it's from eddie deka um what kind of practice do I need to do to draw better clothes or costumes in characters? Because uh, I used to draw uh, the figure without it, so it's kind of bad when I'm drawing it now. That was for you, but uh, you're the character. character person. <laughs> you're, you're the character. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, the... that's what... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's uh, like the main thing is just it's going to be. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of tutorials on uh, how cloth falls and how gravity kind of works on that. So uh, go to go to uh, in, uh, not Instagram, Pinterest. Go to Pinterest. Write drapery. How to how to draw drapery, and you're gonna find a bunch of uh, tutorials and, and stuff and explanations on how folds and gravity kind of work and how it's kind of wrapped around the form. But it's good that you know anatomy because then you know what the structure is underneath and then now you have to put another kind of layer on top of it but the structure underneath will dictate what how it how it's gonna how it's gonna you know how the behavior of the cloth is um, from there so that would be, a, that would be my advice yeah to, to add a bit more to his question would you say it's better for him to learn how to invent folds should he take his own reference how should he proceed when he does his own paintings well, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, so I don't want to presume. Oh, but, uh, um, yeah. I, 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 it might be a girl, but uh, 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 reference Whoever. is good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Re reference is good. Uh, I think. Do you did you do that? Uh, as I say when you're doing a drapery, do you do like your own reference? Yeah, my wife would be uh, posing. Uh, like we we even buy like. Um, I know particular for not even just draper like for if there's a specific material i have no idea how to paint like when i did true damage kiana i bought like this fake glass diamond for 10 bucks just to see how reflections work inside of it nice uh, so yeah I, I definitely like to to do the poses well i think that's smart like have like a little uh, a little kind of like riff uh riff studio so yeah yeah I think that would be good too. Do you have a Do you have a question uh, question on your end? Uh, there is a question on how it is to run the studio Anvar. If I paint anymore from PS Do, uh, character environment or the art for Arcane, or is it just management? So. To, to answer that one is like honestly, I, I don't get to paint as much 
uh, as I would like anymore. It's mostly like uh, feedback or support. Uh, I didn't. I haven't. When we started the studio, I would take on a few tasks to to do them as well. But as most of the day just gets pulled away to helping the rest of the team, I sort of had to put a rule. I was like, okay, no, no, no paintings. You know, just <laughs> no commitment to making a painting. Only if I had the time slot to do it. Uh, but uh, I, I get a lot of pleasure in just uh, seeing everybody else make amazing work. Uh, but but I'm okay with that. It's something I was sort of a uh, accepted before I sort of dove into the whole studio aspect. Yeah, there's uh, just there's there's just too many things, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just not either either I I I give up uh, on how to run the studio and I pass on that task to someone else. But there's a very specific vision and what I believe in for our team and studio that I don't uh, I want to be the one to sort of run that. So. Uh, I did a trade-off where I got help on the art side from our art director instead. So, uh, but yeah. But this is a question for both of us. Do you guys have any tip on, from Ryu Music? Do you guys have any tip uh, on self-care, like preventing neck pain, wrist uh, RSI? I don't know what that stands for. So I think it's uh, like a carpal tunnel. Okay. Uh, any other health issues that can emerge when you spend a lot of time in front of a screen? I think it comes you back. Wanna... Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I think it comes back to the to the exercise. I really think it's so essential. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, even with with me, like right now, I'm kind of like I feel like I'm kind of bending my head down and kind of doing. I normally don't do that with the tablet. I sit like very straight, but um get out move the body is the best way to kind of like counteract all the sitting down in front of the computer um i think that's that's just the most sound advice i can give on that that part i think if you have carpal tunnel the fastest way i found to recover from carpal tunnel is to um i can show you actually on my, on my little camera here um is this it's a wrist guard and what it does is you can put your little 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 hand in here <laughs> then you can um you can uh kind of lock it like this essentially but what it does is that you cannot bend it there's like a there's a metal plate in here so you can't really bend your wrist much uh and then i would sleep with it and uh, in terms of uh when i go to bed i would i would wear it um so i'm not when i'm sleeping i'm not uh, bending my wrist and uh, that was the fastest uh the fastest way I, I found it to heal was just to kind of give it rest as much as possible during the day whenever i could but especially during the night it sped it up so fast but uh what about you etsy uh i think i think posture is really important especially if you can get a standing desk so you don't have to sit all day uh, i think that can help a lot with posture and um uh, you know, if I sort of have a rule, I don't know about you, but it's like as soon as I feel any pain, like neck or hand, it's instantly it's like a warning flag. It's like take a break right now. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, it can't wait. Take a break, stretch or something to really because uh, to ignore that, it's like it's not gonna go away. You just uh, it's like inviting additional trouble <laughs> for the future uh, that you don't want. I agree. I think that's actually a, a good advice. Like, uh, you whenever you feel it, step away from the computer and and try to try to move that body part in some sort of way. But yeah, there's yeah. uh there's one. Let's see. Uh, oh wow, a lot of questions came in. One sec. Where's my mouse? <laughs> Do you ever find yourself too that you're just looking for where your mouse is? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um uh do you think with six hours of uh let me see oh my god i'm so sorry like i have to pick some of the some of these um but this one says like essentially essential question since posture is very important what chair would you recommend for artists i mean that kind of goes into like what we what we, were, we just talk, talked about um do you have a chair that you can recommend I would just say try it before if you can try it before you buy it uh 
ideally if you can go to the store i know it's easier to just order but like to sit in it is very different you know try a few of them before you commit i don't you know everybody's different back you know so i don't have a specific one i would recommend same same yeah um uh, i'm using one that's on the expensive end of the spectrum um uh, mainly because I was able to find it really cheap, cheaply, and it's it's really good for ergonomics. Yeah. But uh, I I think it's like if I had to buy that buy that at a, at a normal price, uh, I would never have bought it because it's uh, it's just ridiculous. So yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, do you think with six hours of drawing practice every day, is it possible to become professional in five years, or at least with good line art in three years? Take it away, Ate. I think so. Uh, I th I think definitely, but it's also like how you're spending those six hours. You know, if it if it's six hours of productive work, of course, you know. But if it's like six hours of tabbing out every once in a while, checking Instagram or Facebook, you know, probably not. Yeah, I think uh, an important thing is also like uh, like. I, I don't know like i think whenever we talk about time or something like that i think it's 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 a dangerous trap in a wind way too because it becomes like a measuring stick and then if yeah. you like if you don't have done that at, at a certain time or whatever you feel like a failure or something it's like no it's like yeah thing take things takes time and you can't kind of like put that like i'm gonna be here in five years like things change life changes you never know what happens so um so you can have that initial plan of like this is where i'm aiming and this is where i kind of want to want to go but just don't put too much emphasis on it remember to to have a bit of flexibility in there essentially yeah, yeah we, we sort of talked about it earlier but, but it's like i think uh thinking about how important it is and if you can if it's super super if it's like this is the only thing that I want to do. It's like you can obviously increase a lot more of the time and, you know, sort of uh, learn a lot more and a lot faster because things will change, you know. And I think uh, just line work can work, you know, but I think the stronger you are as an artist and painter, uh, the more likelihood you will uh, sort of find a spot somewhere. Uh Let's see. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Here's one. Uh, what do you think of labor market of illustration concept art? Is there more and more work with the development of video games? I'm going to try to say that again because I'm not quite, quite sure I understood it correctly. Um, uh, okay, so there's actually an, an addition to it too. So it says... What do you think of the labor market of illustration slash concept art? Is there more and more work with the development of video games, or less because of the demon, <laughs> sorry, demon, demon uh, creation through YouTube? I think it's like demonetization or something. Uh, oh, demonetization through YouTube and social media. I would say it's a lot more work out there now like there's so many studios out there they're just popping up right like there is uh, so many studios getting funding and investment uh, to make games uh, which is amazing because that opens up so many new jobs for artists as well uh, we actually struggle finding people to, to be completely honest right there is um uh, it's really, really hard to find a, because uh, everybody's looking like art station. Everybody's looking there, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, if I would say there's there's a lot of jobs out there. You know, as long as you can do the the work, the, I guarantee you're gonna get work straight away. You know, if if the work is good enough, or or he hits that that quality bar, I w I would not be worried. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it. What it really comes down to is the quality of work. So yeah, yeah. So essentially, if if something is not coming in the door or something, um, don't don't. Uh, our main focus should be, you know, on like, okay, what do I need to do in order to get better? Um, 
and then eventually when you keep your focus on on getting better eventually things starts to roll a little bit more and offers will come in but i think an important element to that too is like you need to do work but you also need to get it out there essentially yeah um because yeah. if it's just sitting on your hard disk like it doesn't do any good you know um so you know do the work try to get better get it out into the world yeah i i think that's that's really important it's like you know uh, people need to be able to find you somehow i think arch station is really a fantastic place to to put your work out there our, our instagram is great twitter is great but like if you're looking to get hired i would say arch station is, is really good to go to uh, and I, I remember a particular example i, I can share where uh, we have a fantastic artist called uh Hennen, uh and i'd never seen this guy's work before you know and i remember that day it popped up on arch station uh it was i think he just had started the account or something and i was telling our crew to alex we need to we need to talk to this guy like right now <laughs> we need to like get in touch with him as fast as possible this guy is absolutely amazing i've never seen the work before and it wasn't very popular at the time on our station either but it's like there's just something in the work that we instantly picked up as soon as he basically posted up the work so uh, yeah if if the work is great he just put it out there i guarantee you people will will find you That was good. I love actually that answer because uh, you're the perfect guy to kind of like talk about this <laughs> because you're actually going through the process of looking and, and hiring artists. So, uh, so yeah. it's it's nice to kind of have that that perspective. So it's not just yeah. you know from the ones who are often seeking, but uh, how is it to, to be the one that's are hiring? Yeah, but yeah I agree. I think uh, I think uh, the industry is going bananas, and there's yeah. uh, more. <laughs> more uh, jobs out there uh, especially since you know than there was you know 10 years ago so there's more yeah. opportunities out there and uh, yeah um let's see um let's see uh, bo -bo -do -bo -do. uh hey Ispen, do you guys have any thoughts on clip studio paint as a competitor to photoshop or and as a student should i stick to photoshop we we touched a little bit upon uh, upon that uh, earlier in the talk, um, so I'll just like uh, do the the quick recap of that uh, in case you, you joined a little bit later. Um, but essentially, uh, we both really like Clip Studio Paint. We think that Clip Studio Paint has a lot of potential. We love that there's a competitor to uh, Photoshop because essentially it's gonna be it's gonna mean that it's we're gonna get better products. Um, yeah and uh we're all for that <laughs> give us the best tools that we can we can make um yeah. so we're all for it uh, i think clip studio paint is a, a fantastic program i think it's uh price wise it's way more competitive than photoshop is um so yeah. if you're a student and you don't have uh the amount of money that you know photoshop for example requires i think clip studio paint is a great alternative um yeah. and i think clip studio paint have have even uh, beaten uh, Photoshop on, on some things, but there's also some things where Photoshop is better than Clip Studio Paint. So it's a, it's a mix, it's a mix. Um, I think for me, I think Photoshop is still better in terms of like editing and photo manipulation tools, but in terms of some of the painting tools and brushes and all that, it's better in, uh, in Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, I agree. So that's that's the, I think that's the that's the recap. Uh, for that. Um, yeah. What about uh? What about the? What about the? What about you? Do you have any uh? Any uh? What's it called? Questions on your side? Yeah, uh, I got one from. Uh, let me see. There's a few of them. Uh, we can start. We can take Sebastian Begin. Do you guys feel it's important not to work on autopilot? How do you keep making conscious decisions instead of mindlessly drawing? Well, that's actually, I really like that question. Yeah. You want to go? 
No, I want to hear your thoughts. First. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I th I think like uh, you 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 want to sort of like I th you know like in a day you only have so much energy, right? And you can only concentrate so much before your brain just checks out. At least for me, you know. Uh, and what I would propose is like every day try to, uh, especially like before lunch to get in the big decisions then uh, and try to answer the big questions. And after lunch, you can focus on uh, doing things that don't require you to think too hard. You know, uh, that that's just my philosophy to try and like, think, I think of myself almost like a, a battery, right? When it's green and it's fully charged, use it on the most difficult part. And as the battery starts running out during the day, turn on audiobook, turn on music, and then you can just concentrate on making it look uh, look good, but you don't really have to make difficult decisions in the image. I like that. I think that's uh, that's the eat the frog first, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I think um, I think people work different, too. I know that you're you always been like a wake up early type of guy. <laughs> You wake up like at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. sometimes, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like, uh, yeah. so you're definitely a morning person. Um, yeah. I, th I think I'm a hybrid. I swing, like, depending on my sleep cycles. But okay. I do f I do find that um, for me, sometimes working in the evening, if there's, like, kind of peace and quiet around me, I really f delve into a, into a zone. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, it depends on, on what, what kind of works for you and feel it out, feel like where where do you have your best moments. But I, I agree a lot with that. Of like if if you're problem solving some really hard problems, start with the heaviest first. Yeah. Um, for sure. Because like when you're depleted, you're not going to do a great job of solving problems. So. Yeah. But uh... I'd say I think you're one of the craziest persons I know in terms of like, um, like uh, crazy and in, in incredibly disciplined and burning desire, you know, um, not in, Thanks, a, in a negative way, but like you, you know, like you, ha you worked, woke up for like, uh, so long, such a long time, just like at 5 AM or something, just yeah. because that was like, you know, that's what you were doing and I was like, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, I probably could, it's probably just a mindset. So. Just the fact yeah. that I'm saying I don't know if I could do it, that's probably just it. I just need to shift that mindset and then I would just start doing it. Instead of starting yeah. to think too much about it, just start doing. Yeah. I, I think it's it's uh how, how you know, like I was doing it a lot in LA because it was things were really important to me that I wanted to achieve before the day started. Now I still I still work same amount of time just later in the night instead of uh, starting a bit earlier. But I want to get back to the uh, I was doing the early cycle again, but I got pretty sick with COVID, so it sort of messed everything up. But I want to get back to it uh, in January again. Sorry to hear that. It sounds like it was a it was a rough. Uh rough one because if you if you could have uh, woken up early i'm sure you would have done it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh i have one more here um uh, uh from radu dross is it better to work in a small studio that just started out or in a bigger company what would you prefer um smaller why the reason why is um, I think if you start out in a big company, I actually think you start taking some things for granted. Yeah. Um, you know, because you don't know what the rest of the of the landscape is. Um, and of, of, often also like I think I think you don't you're not I don't know, you, you don't, yeah, you don't appreciate it in the, in the same way. Um, yeah, yeah. there's just there's just some things that, and I think also like if you have the smaller studios, you learn some really valuable things. You know, like you get to wear some more hats. It's a little bit more intimate. Um, yeah, I think the smaller studios. But what about you? Uh, 
I think because we both worked at uh, pr pretty small with uh, the first studio we worked, and then we both did Riot, which is pretty big. Uh, and I think we both have like really cool aspects where, you know, the small one you you really felt like you knew everybody, you know, uh, and it felt like you were sitting really closely. Uh, but definitely like on the, uh, at least where we worked, uh, the niceties of a bigger office, you, you know, obviously we <laughs> we did not have that, which is nice, you know, when you work in like a a nice office environment and campus and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I think there's good to both, but um, it just really depends on like, you know, where do you want to go with your work and where, uh, because like, for instance, say you come into a smaller studio that started out. If you're the only artist, I don't think it's that valuable of an experience versus like if there's a team of artists, right? Because uh, I think it's really important uh, if you're starting out to be around people who who also do the creative side, so you're not sort of the only person doing that. Uh, it's just my opinion. There's also uh, one here that says, this is more of a technical question, but would you show us how to go from grayscale to color sometime? Uh, I can, but uh, I, <laughs> I normally, for these sort of sketches, I kind of... If I start them in grayscale, I normally keep them to grayscale uh, because often if I'm planning to do color, I'll just paint straight in color. But uh, let's try to do it. Um, but it's going to be janky. It, it, like it's a finessing thing, especially when you're taking from uh, grayscale, from grayscale to color. It's it's a lot of finessing. So, but I can show you like how to kind of start it out. Um, so I'll do that in the background and then. Uh, and then we we just keep talking. Uh, it's actually pretty good because there's a question from Artrich Studio. I'm working to improve my colors. My painting looks like a clown vomited on my drawing. What would oh, you no. recommend for perfection <laughs> <laughs> color <laughs> color That's selection? A clown. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Uh, I I I know that feeling. T uh, um. Oof. Well, I think often if it feels like if it feels like it's a clown that vomited, it sounds like it's uh, it sounds like it's uh, oversaturation. So it sounds like it's too much color, um, and uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So you want to make sure that you're working with the grays uh, and with desaturation. Um, often things appear to be colorful mostly because there's a really nice balance of grays. And things that aren't colorful, um, but I think that's that's really when you when explaining color to somebody who's who's starting out, it's a little bit hard because understanding color is is tricky to it's it's tricky to give a simple explanation of it because it's relative. So that means that color changes in terms of how you perceive the color depending on what is around it. So that in itself sounds very elusive. Um, but color is sort of like a little bit elusive and can do a lot of tricks to your, to your eye. Um, but the main thing is going to be to kind of like control where it doesn't need to have a lot of color and where it is that you want to the, to leave the eye and then you can apply color there or vice versa. So that was a horrible explanation of it, but, uh, Ete, would you have a better one? <laughs> um. I would say painting from uh, life has always been really helpful for me uh, to just because uh, because I, I remember particularly like um, there was a period where I especially there was a there was a group of artists who they had such a unique way of using colors you know it felt almost felt felt like you you could taste it how tasty it was you know. Uh, and I was looking at it was I think it was Dice to Toomey and Nathan folks in particular who had while different styles their colors were fantastic you know and I was looking for the secret what what is the secret thing that these two have in common you know um, and what I found was particularly for like people work on feature film and animation they do a lot of outdoor painting you know um, and I was like oh is is that it you know. Uh, and I started doing it myself, and I think uh, 
not necessarily about the secret like outdoor painting but it's like when you paint outside it's like you observe things differently than if you're looking at a photo because your eye um it just you know you can pick up with so many different things with your eyes than compared to a camera lens you know i know camera lenses are really good now but still the eyeball is better uh, and uh, i think if you work with traditional media as well uh, it's really painful when you make a mistake so you tend to be more observant as you're painting and you try and i think you pick up more stuff that way uh, and and i think that way can be a really good approach to try and improve your colors your first probably 100 painting are going to still look like the clown vomited on it, you know, <laughs> with uh, traditional media as well. But I think after a while, it would it will get better. Definitely. Yeah, it, it will take time and practice for sure. I love that. Uh, I'm going to remember that clown, <laughs> clown vomited on my uh, views. Yeah. That's going to be something I'm going to say next time. I'm, I'm missing with my colors. So. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like you're you're pretty good with colors too. Like uh, I say, like what what was one of the the things that kind of like where you felt like uh, you learned the most in terms of how colors work and everything? I think it was really just painting a lot from outside, to be honest. And then uh, what I tried to do with like the outdoor painting is like I'm not I'm not good at traditional, you know. But it's like I think it's okay. Uh, because it's, for me, it's more about like learning than trying to make a pretty painting when I go outside. And I think the way I've tried to paint uh, traditionally is to mimic digitally. So it's like wash is very close to how I work digitally. And that's been, it's been a good bridge between the learning and implementing as well, which, which I, I found super helpful for me at least. So you would say like plain air was like the, the, the thing that kind of like put it all together for you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I remember I, t I was I was taught um, I was taught the theory, like color theory and all that. And it took me a year before I was able, I understood the theory, but I wasn't able to use it. Like it took me took me a good chunk of time before uh, any of that started to kind of fall into place. Yeah. Just takes time. Yeah. Um, bo -bo -bo -bo. Let's see. Uh, are you change? Uh, are you changing the layer mode for the color passes? Yes. Uh, right now the color uh, mode is uh, multiply. So I'm trying to just lighten up some of the the darks so they're not as black um because often if something is like really black or white um it feels washed out so i'm gonna try to kind of like do that but like especially working with grayscale um it's a messy process because it's like it, you're building layer upon layer upon a layer and you're basically relying on your eye uh of what looks right uh to it um so like it's it's kind of building in subtlety, 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 uh, subtlety, um, and uh, it just takes time. Um, but what what do you think? Like, do you work for, go from um, do you use the sort of like grayscale to color uh, often? I say, um, not so much personally. Um, sometimes maybe like really early stages, just to put down the read hierarchy of like, you know, how do I want to group the values as a whole? What's going to be in the light? What's going to be in the shadow? But I tend to, at least with personal work, because I'm not looking for feedback from anyone. I'm just doing my thing. I just, I just go straight into colors. But I think for when you work for someone else, it's kind of good to do black and white first to make sure that uh, they don't get distracted by colors early on. That's, that's good advice too. Uh, what is the most important thing you need to keep it like? So we'll probably do, let's do a, like a two or three more questions and we'll start to kind of like, we'll start to round, off. round it out. Yeah, because we've been going okay. for like two and, a half, two and a half hours and I can hear, I can hear we're getting a little tired. <laughs> 
It's almost midnight. <laughs> it's almost midnight for us. So yeah. uh, okay. So I think I think it's 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 a good time to start to slowly wrap this up. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. Um, what is the most important thing you need to keep in mind when working for a company? I say, take it away. Uh, I think you you know like it's imp- I think I think probably the most important thing is like you're you're there to be part of a team and to bring whatever vision that company has in mind to light. Uh, and I think sometimes it can be easy to try and do your own vision versus what's actually the best thing for the thing you're working on, you know. Um, and I think I think it's like a balance, right? It's not only like you should not only just listen to the direction, but add your own flavor and it's trying to find there's something i struggled a lot with you know in my early careers like should you 100 percent follow the feedback should you filter it and try to pick out the the nuggets and build upon it uh but i think always trying to think about what is you know objectively for the thing you're making say you're making a illustration of a new character uh, really trying to represent the character and the accurate lighting and trait it is versus uh, uh, you know too much of a personal taste on it. If, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like like don't just do what it is that you want to do. Remember that it's 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 you're working in unison with with several disciplines, and there's a bigger thing behind it. And it's your job to communicate all the work that was also done by the people. Uh, you know, in order to, for example, create a character or design a character and create the story behind it. So, is that what is that understood correctly? That is an amazing explanation of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I very much. I agree very much. I think uh, it's a balance. It's a balance of uh, doing. You know, at, when you're doing a job, you have to be professional. Like you just. Yeah. You're being hired to do something. That's what you're being paid to do. And uh, you can find ways where you can add your own twist to it or, or things like that, but stay professional in terms of like, you know, if you do something, just do it well. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can I have, maybe we can take two more from mine. And if you want to take one or two more, we can wrap up. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, this one is pretty interesting from al Sharam, what do you think about working freelance right away rather than going to a studio first? I'll take it. Uh, I, I think, I actually talked to a friend of mine a lot about this, and I think, especially early in your career, going in-house, it can be extremely valuable, you know, because I think when you're starting out, there's so much to learn, uh, not, not just about art, right? It's about other disciplines as well, because if you're working as a concept artist, you're part of a, a larger cycle, right? You, what you're drawing, the 3D artist is going to build, and then the animator is going to animate, and, and so on. And then the illustrator is going to do promo work of it. And I think it's, it's important to understand that cycle because it'll help you inform decisions on your own that... If you work freelance, I think oftentimes it's different if you do freelance illustration. I'm talking more about concept art. Uh, that it's a one way door and it's not too collaborative. Uh, and I think you can miss out on a lot of things that way. So I would, uh, even though freelance is a bit more, you know, you can work, uh, you know, your hours and stuff. But I think going to a studio first, uh, it would be very healthy, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I would like to kind of second some of that. Um, I think it also depends on what kind of person you are. Yeah. Um, so I think that has a lot of uh, of say into it, and your life situation and and all that. Um, you know, if if you're like if if for some reason, like let's say that your situation is that your mother is sick you don't have a father and uh you know like your mom is relying on you like 
just moving country to a studio or something like moving away to a studio is extremely extremely hard to do um so yeah. it, it it definitely you know like the devices the, the advice that we have kind of dispensed tonight is like uh like it's not one fits all of course but uh I yeah think generally right generally for most part if if it doesn't come with a huge uh sacrifice on your end and you feel like you want to do it i think that there's a lot of benefits with with uh with taking studio work too to start off with yeah and you're going to learn from the people around you that's 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 really uh amazing and fun yeah and i think it would be cool you're probably going to move as well right you get to see different part of the world and just learn new things and i think the uh you know if you have a partner you have family and stuff that stuff gets harder later in life um so if you're early in your 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 uh, your young 20s or you know whatever it is like take the chance to just explore and you know have fun Um, let's see. We got do 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 do. Uh, have you tried select color range hue uh, hue saturation slider to adjust the uh, color certain value? I found it should be a very straightforward working flow to colorize without getting muddy colors. Yeah, that could work. Um, I don't normally. So the thing is, I normally don't work in this. I don't normally work from grayscale to color. Often I would like do grayscale as studies or something like that. And then, um, and then I would mostly do pretty much all professional work directly in color. Um, so, um, it's been a while since I've been, uh, I've been, uh, coloring from grayscale, but there's, uh, let's see, there's a question here that says, um, That's the same question that we just said. Sorry, I'm gonna go a little bit further down. Um, um, I've been doing, um, I've been doing art. Some, uh, there's a little bit of sorry. I've been doing, I've been doing art about five years. Um, uh, and now I'm still learning and improving uh, and i've been dealing with a lot of discouragement discouragement like with my own art not by anyone just my own self trying to get over over it um i think this person was kind of like uh it's kind of like more saying that that it's um you know that when like they they they've been they've been working on art for about you know for about five years, they're still learning and they're still improving a lot, but yeah. uh, they're they're dealing with a lot of discouragement um, in their own art and it's not by any any out uh, external external um, source, it's uh, something internal, and and they're just trying to kind of like see how to navigate some of that. What would you yeah. say? Moist. That's that's. I think w I have a bit of that too. But what what about uh, what about do you? Do you want to go first? I can do it. Um, I think um, I think when you're when you have that sort of internal voice or, or pressure too, where you're you're judging yourself very hardly, and sometimes like too hard, where it actually becomes um, it can become you know um, too much, right? Where it becomes uh, self-sabotaging or self-destructive and um, and I think the way that you kind of balance some of that is is essentially to um, to understand that that voice that you had built in a first place in the first place was there because it served a function um, it kind of pushed you harder right it was like whenever you were feeling like quitting or whenever you would feel like giving up or something like that it would kind of help you push yourself a little bit further but uh, the problem is give me one second I just need to shift this song here because I think the play started to go over into something else all right so what you have to remember is essentially um, 
that that mechanic that you build in, internally that served a function in the, in the start you have to watch it and say like hey is this starting to become constructive or is this mechanic actually starting to um to be destructive and it sounds to me like uh, from the way that you're describing it is that you're your own worst critic right and that can be a good thing and a bad thing i think the the thing when it gets really bad is when it becomes self-destructive in that sort of sense and then you want to look at it too and you say like okay how can i how can i change some of my behavior and that's really fucking hard to do I'm not saying that it, that's easy but uh how can i relieve some of that pressure that i put on myself and that i've done for a long time so when you maybe f f talk to yourself really uh harshly and badly you you have to like try to be aware when that's happening and kind of catch yourself when you're doing it and try to sh shift it try to be like you know like it's not that bad you know like I'm, I'm improving i'm still learning and that's good just take it give it time right and and be gentle with yourself because you have to remember it too is like you don't go up to a plant and you don't like scold it and yell at it and and say grow faster grow faster you're not you're not doing <laughs> it you're not doing enough and and that's what you are like you're a living organism and as long as you you tend to it as long as you care for the craft that you're doing then it will grow but it will it, it's just gonna take time and you know remember that to be kind of gentle with it go go back water it do your thing um and then try to let go of that sort of like a uh, judging uh judging voice that you you um built in in the start or maybe find a way to update it that would be that would be my two cents but uh, what do you think Ete? i think that's a really great answer and just to add on top of it uh, because it, it sort of uh, ties into a cycle of thinking a bit negatively um and i sort of had this exact same thing where it was like um it is really easy to look at all the bad stuff in your work, you know? Um, and I think it can spread out to other things during your day or your life, right? And I noticed this thing particularly like for myself, I was getting a bit too negative, uh, or maybe a, a lot of negative, mostly on myself, you know? And I, I, I picked up this thing which made a huge difference. It was like, a, it, it was called a five minute journal. And every day, you have to write something you're grateful for. Doesn't have to be art, you know? Um, and uh, something that, uh, let me think. It was like, it was, uh, it, was the f it was basically three things of like, what you're grateful for, what you're hoping to do today, uh, and what you accomplished today, you know? And it's, the idea about it, it's like, it, it starts putting in this mindset of thinking positively, uh, it's just a small thing of like just appreciating the things that are great, you know. Uh, I think I think can make a big, really, really big difference, you know. Uh, in just changing that that mindset. I think this could, I think, directly impact on how you look at your art as well. So uh, there, there's a lot of different versions out there, but the one I got was like a five minute journal, and, you just, and it's like each morning it was really cool. It's like a motivational speech or like a some pep word you know before you start your day you just read that and try not to spoil the day that's coming up you know so it's always cool to reading those uh, uh that i really liked and i think uh just to add to what has been said i would i would try that as well yeah, that's really good um all right your last question okay uh let me see Uh, we can take by. You can look. You uh, can look. You can look a little bit and say like, "Hey, give me a really good question." You know, like, "Give me a hard <laughs> one." <laughs> <laughs> if anyone has any any questions they've been burning to to ask, feel free to drop it. There's a few of them that are pretty good in here. Uh, it's funny because like this, the music on my end is like super jolly and like <laughs> Merry Christmas Eve I just feel like 
We're just talking about some real life stuff. It's uh, it's good. Yeah. All right. Let's let's do. Uh... Uh, from Max Minnow. Hey guys, love the stream. Curveball question. What is one past project you wish you could have been part of and, and why? Keep up the amazing work. You want to start? Yeah. No, you, you go, you go. I want to hear yours first. Arcane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was hard to, um, it was hard to sit and see that get made and not be able to work on it um that was, that was hard and uh it's just such a masterpiece man and, and i i yeah. got the first sneak peeks like it's like three four years ago and yeah. i was like i cannot believe that like this is looking so good yeah um so yeah like i i wish i would have worked on arcane that's uh I feel it's the best thing that Riot has has produced, and uh, in a sense, in a sense, we were we were part of it because we helped we helped the the money flow, so it, we could invest in making some bigger chances. So, but yeah. I don't know, I don't know if that's the wrong way of conceptualizing it, but uh, but I would have loved to work on that game. That would have been absolutely fantastic. I think so too, man. Like I saw their concept Victor posted the other day and they, they posted a lot of the artists who worked on the show posted up their work. It looks so goddamn cool. It looked like they had a lot of fun as well. Uh, so uh, I would I would hard agree on Arcane. Very everybody who worked on it did such an incredible job and it's just it's just too short. That's why I would complain. Like we're gonna have to wait so long to get the the uh, yeah, that's why only uh, it's just fantastic. And I think what's cool about it, it's like I think it pushed animation forward, which is amazing, you know. So hopefully, it'll be other studios would be like, huh, maybe we should try and make a cool animated series, <laughs> you know? Uh, who knows? Totally. I think it's also it's it's like it's one of those things where it made an impact, and it's something that people re will remember for a very long time to come. But I remember in uh, in one of my early uh, talks, I think it was in the interview talk I had when I was about to join, they would ask like, you know, like, what would you see? What would you love to see Riot do in the next, you know, five years? Um, yeah. And I brought up the, the what's it called? The example of Pokemon. Where yeah. I said, I think Pokemon became so big not because of the game, but because of the game and the the TV series at the same time. Because with the game, it was just like a, a you know flat pixel, and it, and it was it was fine. It was good at the time, but with this with the with this TV series all of a sudden coming out around the same time, now you had emotions and you had an yeah. emotional link to it. So when you went back to the game, you felt way more. Like you were like, yeah. oh, that's Pikachu, and then you're like, you, you know how they reacted, and you had all these feelings connected to it, and I think that that's really what that's so great about Arcane now because the game has been really great and whatever, but a lot of people would love to see more of that story and hear about the characters and see that human humanness uh, in the characters, not that they're just like aspirational and cool and badass all the time, like because. That's a that's a that's a fake fantasy. Nobody's like that. Um, yeah. The human the humanness is the darkness that we all carry in us and the suffering and all all that sort of stuff. And I think that Arcane was perfect because it didn't shy away from being dark. It didn't shy yeah. away from being grim. It was a it was a risk because a lot of shows don't do that, right? It's it's like yeah. oh we can't show all these things because it's gonna. It's just like no, like. Oh, like Christian Linke uh, was the art director of it, and he, you know, he hold hold steady, and that was the right thing for the story, and I really applaud him for that. I think, uh, yeah, it's uh, the, totally the right call, um, and uh, and I think honestly, all the all the the success that came from it uh, is so very well deserved. So um, I would yeah. have loved would have loved to work on on it. Hey, Amen. Same. Who knows? Maybe, maybe yeah. for the future. Yeah. Maybe Arcane uh, Five. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so we'll, we'll see how the future goes. But yeah, um, it's funny that it's the same one. Um, yeah, it's, just, it's wonderful, wonderful uh, project. Fortiche kicked the uh, kicked ass. Yeah. Um, do you want to do the last one from your? Yeah, let's do the last one, and then we're gonna gonna round it out. Um. Oh wow, uh, there's a lot of ones. I'm gonna look through and pick one that I like. Oh, this is a great one. To, this is a great one to start off, uh, end off with. Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm really getting ready for bed soon too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. What What are your long term goals, art wise? I'd say take it away. Oh. <laughs> uh... can, can I link it to the studio? Yeah, of course. I think I have linked in the in in the, the, the description. There is a link to Ete Studio too. The is it Enva that you yeah. want to link to? Okay, so in the yeah. in the description, there's a a link to envastudio.com. Um, so so whatever Ete is gonna be saying now, um, it's gonna be tied in with that. Okay, I I want to. I believe in trying to make the absolute best working environment on the planet, you know, and I really want to build something where all the most fantastic and creative people can can work in a place where uh, it's just focusing on the creative aspect and just really having the best time of their artistic career, you know, and I think uh, you know, it's it's a long goal, and I think it's a very difficult one. But especially in the games industry, um, I think there's a need for uh, there's a lot of great companies out there, but I want us to be the absolute best when it comes to working environment um, and make the best work that's ever been in the entertainment industry. It's a really lofty one. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What about you? Long term. Art, long-term goals art-wise um, I would love to to be able to still create until I die um, just to keep, be able to just keep making good work and art that um, that's that communicates um, the human soul and I guess also some of mine and I hope with time too I I will dare to show myself a little bit more. Um, I'm working on a personal project that been on the hold for very, very, very way too long, and uh, love to at some point get that all wrapped up and out into the world and kind of show that piece of me. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just love to keep working. Um, yeah. At 95, still doing commission 95, illustration. 95, 95. <laughs> yeah, and then still, yeah. I mean, or at that point, it would probably just be for me. And then whoever yeah. would like to buy it would like to buy it. And, but, um, but for me, I don't know. I think it's just to keep, 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 keep doing it. That, that would be my long term goal. I just want to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, I really like it. Um, and uh, it's been one of the best things in my life, I would say. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. If that's I don't know if that's a bad answer, but that's that's an honest. I answer. think that's a good one. Yeah. So, that's it. That's it. We we did it, Ate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was three hours almost. Um, it was super fun, man. Yeah. Was, these are always like uh, once you kind of get going and you. You start to relax a little bit more in it and like, oh yeah, and then you like start to drift off. That's that's really good because uh, yeah. then it's just you. And I think you, you, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a pleasure doing this with you. It's, uh, Same I think, man. I think, uh, I think we, we got high, we got low, we got, we covered like a, a wide area. So, um, 
I think yeah, people, whole spectrum. People, yeah, exactly. So I think people uh, yeah. people really enjoyed it. That's just at least what they say in the in the chat now. So awesome. Um, yeah, um, I think that's it. Are you ready to uh, ready to hit that stop streaming button in a second? Yeah, yeah. Just want to wish wish everybody Merry Christmas, and for everybody who joined in, thank you so much. Totally. Yeah, and enjoy enjoy the the, the time with family and all that. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna head out and enjoy enjoy the, the last bits of the the evening, and then christmas eve tomorrow that's gonna be fun yeah. yeah so have a great one y'all merry christmas and happy new year when that time comes merry christmas bye